<laughs> you almost got to blame so someone. Have maybe anybody that wants to do that from the street, you know, we can have all of our streets fixed. That would be great. Right. We're going to start our city council meeting. Uh, regularly monthly city council meeting is September the 17th, 6.30. With that, we will have a roll call. Mayor Eichhorst. Here. Councilor Pendergrass. Here. Councilor Phillips. Here. Councilor Richards. Here. Councilor Romanek. Here. Six or six. <laughs> Get in. Get in. All right. <clears throat> Welcome, everybody. Good night. Um, We'll approve our agenda first. I have one ad, and that is in your laying on your uh, desk in front of you. This was uh, I'm under petitions, requests, and communications. A memo from Eric Raven from Renaissance Tree Care. I don't know if he's here today. Not yet. Okay. So I'd like to add that there. Where are we adding? Two, where are we adding? Right under, under B, number five. Petitions. Now the changes that make a motion, we approve the agenda as amended. Okay. Any other comments? Seeing none, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Both the same sign. Okay, next time is our public forum. It's a three minute time limit per person. The City Council welcomes and encourages participation from community members. Please keep in mind that your comments must be pertinent to city business and must adhere to data privacy rules. No employees' names may be used. Please do not expect action from the Council this evening regarding your concerns. To address the City Council during public forum, please step up to the podium and state your name, address, and fill out the form provided. I have a couple already, but to fill it out and bring those up, that'd be great. Um, please step up to the podium, state your name, address, and fill out the form. Speakers will be recognized only once. You will be timed. Begin speaking with the green card that's raised by Renee, our deputy clerk. Yellow card indicates you have 30 seconds left, and the red card indicates you have reached your three minute limit and stop. So the first um, person is uh, Ted Bauer. You state your name, address. Here at Ted Bauer, uh, 1310 Shady Oak Lane Southwest. Okay, first of all, uh, this is my first time speaking here, so this is a new experience for me, so thanks for the time. Um, but first of all, I want to say thank you for the sewer work. Um, it's awesome to be off of a shared septic onto a city sewer. Fantastic. Thanks for everything that everybody's done to, to make that happen. Um, with that said, I think I, I was always brought up with uh, we should leave things better than when they when we started, or at least just as good. So just a couple of things. I live um, right on the start of the, the path uh, that was just paved. And so there's a couple of things that I've noticed that I just want to bring your attention. I don't know if you know about these things, but it seems like um, they maybe aren't up to par of, of when uh, the project started. I'll start with the trees. It is super cool that Whoever made the decision and allocated the money to put trees around the new pump area, fantastic. It would be really cool if we would take care of those trees. There's grass that's growing up literally waist high plus. Um, I think I'm thinking about taking my own personal trimmer and going up there because they're new trees. We want them to live and prosper. Let's just take care of what, what we put in place. I think the, the biggest thing that we've noticed is that soccer field or that, that green space area used to be fantastic. There were soccer goals out there. There was teams, I think, that would practice there from time to time. I would hear kids laughing. It was really a neat environment. After they came through the middle of there, um, I expected that the, the grading would be done very similar to what was in the past. It's, it's really bad um, to the point where, like, you can't get out. You couldn't have a soccer game without kids rolling their ankles. It was all rutted up. I think they made an attempt to grade it, but it's just, it's really not good. Not to the point of which it was. Um, also, the seed that was used, like you go out there, it does not look like it was seed. So I heard it might have been like county grade seed or whatever the case may be. It's definitely like one of these things is not like the other. 
right? Walk on the, the part of the field that was there previously. It's actually really nice turf. It's playable. Kids can be there. The new area is not nice. It's not level. It's not to the point of where it started. That, that should be remedied. Um, I talked about the grass seed. Hopefully that when the, the pavement was just done, that better seed was used because that runs next to my property. I spent a significant amount of money on dirt and regrading that because only a couple feet of dirt was kind of added there. So I guess the, the net was, um, I hope that there's either some type of retention or I guess my ask is whoever's responsible for those things, whether it's the, you know, the city or the county or the subcontractor, whoever it is, I would ask that we kind of, for lack of a better term, hold their feet to the fire just to have it done the right way, just have it done uh, to the same quality as what it was when, when that project was started. That's my two cents. Yeah. Thank you. Next um, person is Marcia Krieger. 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 Yeah. Thank you. Right. It's all right. Everybody mispronounces it. As you all know, I'm Marcia Krieger, and I'm here today in service as the president of the Riverwood Hills Homeowners Association. My address is 1095 Riverwood Drive Southwest. And I'm here to bring a, the condition of the roads at Riverwood Hills to your recollection and to your present awareness. You may remember that Riverwood Hills is served primarily by Riverwood Drive Southwest. There are 54 homes that can be reached only by driving on Riverwood Drive Southwest. And if you count the ones in River Bend, the number comes up to 75. Now, twice we've been before the city council being concerned about having only one road, which is ingress and egress for that subdivision. There is no road that runs out to 100th Street. And twice there have been representations to us that there would be a road installed out that way. One in conjunction when, when River Bend was considered as a subdivision and the second time when the singular house was built just south of Riverwood Hills, between Riverwood Hills and 100th. And the reason that we were concerned about that was twofold. One, obviously emergencies. It is very difficult if you have to get a fire engine or an ambulance into this area that you don't block the entire access for all of these homes. The second was the wear and tear on Riverwood Drive, which is the ingress and the egress. Now, having had heavy equipment go in and build the 19 homes in River Bend and the home that is south of Riverwood Hills and the heavy equipment that's gone in for all of the sewer connection, the road's not in good shape. And it hasn't been in good shape for a substantial time. Our homeowners meeting is coming up in October. And when we last had our homeowners meeting, Councillor Phillips came and explained to us that he anticipated that that road would be resurfaced within a year. That was spring of 2023. Nothing has been done. And not only is that road in need of repair, so are the other roads in Riverwood Hills. My question to all of you is, what do I tell the homeowners this year at our annual meeting? Thank you. Thank you. Second call for a public forum. And third and final call for public forum. With that, we'll close public forum at uh, 640. 
Thanks for coming. So we'll start off with our um, agenda. First item is our county <coughs> enforcement report. It's in your packet. This is from oh, yes. The, we're oh, I'm sorry. Uh, we had a request. Sorry, request. So there's a memo on your table that we received just before the meeting started. Um, so I don't. Jason, would you want to do a quick? Can you want to talk to about a little eight, more? You talked yeah, a little bit yeah. more here. And since this is going to be in the parks, real we quick. talked on the phone. Oh, hey, hi, King. We, we talked on the phone. phone. Yeah. Hey, Sorry. Uh, the petition, the request for tonight is uh, September 27th, 28th. Eric Raven, a local arborist, tree trimmer, tree climber, is going to host a uh, tree trimming clinic with a crane and several uh, arborist companies in the area. And they are going to do a bunch of tree work for us for free, three to five thousand dollars worth. So there's a benefit to the city there. The one thing they're asking is uh, they would like to do some camping Friday and potentially Saturday night. About six or seven individuals. Uh, that's their ask. They would like to camp there. You know how many campers? There, there was mention of three to four tents in total. Um, and there, I'm, there was also mention in here, again, I'm just going off of what he yeah. provided, the information provided. I thought I read here something about a camper or two, but it sounded like the majority of them were going to be in like tents. And they're just looking for a place to stay. Um, he did mention that, you know, they could certainly be put up in Rochester, um, but trying to save a little bit of money as well as give back a little bit more to, you know, us. He said he'd pay camping fees or whatever, you know. Obviously, it's going to be cheaper to camp than be in a hotel in Rochester. So um, they're saving us a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. So that yeah. was the other thing. Yeah. I've talked with Ken about this. You know, I think left on our budget is about five grand for tree work. So, you know, if, if we were to do what they're doing now, that would eat up our budget. This would save us, you know, potentially save us that money to uh, use later in the year, as I'm sure we will, because there's always work to be done. So I'll make a motion to. <clears throat> Uh, camp down there for doing the work. I oh, do, I do, but I but I do have one question. We got to wait till second. Yeah, is second. Second, Paul. I, I made the motion. Yes, yeah, yeah. second. I just yeah. want to make sure they had insurance. Um, a couple of questions, Kane. Uh, the trees they are taking out are those. You know which ones those are, and are they? There's taken a couple away then. Yep, there's a couple of dead oaks that they're going to be removing, <laughs> and then the moose tree. The infamous moose tree they're going to be doing some adjusting and and canopy trimming on the moose tree and uh it's it sounds like a win-win for the city it really does and to paul's question they do have insurance eric is a, a licensed arborist he has his own company he's insured so this one arborist of rock arborist of rochester um has been taking care of the moss tree over the last several years. So are they, are they aware of this? Are they involved? Yep, yep. And so Eric Raven, he's a, he's a privateer. So he works for all these different companies. You name it, you name an, an arborist company in town, Eric's worked with them. He's a, he is a legend in the, the, the tree trimming, tree climbing world. And to have him bring this to us, to our part, and to do some work, it's, uh, it's awesome. It's awesome. Good deal. Any other comments? Oh, so we'll, um, we can make sure the restrooms are open for those two days. Yep. We can use the showers, turn the hot water on. Absolutely. Any other comments? Um, I have one. What's the motion? Are we charging them the camping fees? I, I, I make a motion to waive the fee because they're doing, you know, business and helping the city out. I don't think we need to have it. Just want to make sure we're clear on my yeah. no, I'll I'll amendment. To yeah. So, do you want to accept the amendment to waive the uh, yeah. camping fees? We need the motion from Paul. Are there other comments? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Oh, thank you. Great. Thanks, Eric. No. Yep. All in all. Thank you.
Great. Um, now we see the county sheriff's report. It's about the report. Um, there were 12 traffic stops, is the biggest number, nine community services. The rest of them were all one to three. So pretty typical 44 total, which is very typical of his report, the report. And this was during uh, uh, National Night Out, too. It kind of covers that time frame. So, mm -hmm. some of that community engagement stuff. And yes. I see them. suspicious circumstances. There were five of those. I was wondering what those were. Those can be anything. Um, I They didn't say anything that stuck out. Usually, I mean, suspicious, they can be somebody calling in a suspicious person or a suspicious vehicle and be nothing. So, there was nothing of note that I'm aware of that he was brought to me, my attention. So, it's 44 they're basically over a six week period it looks like yeah five to six week period and these are like some of these are general like the suspicious circumstances that's a generalization for their call for service like i said they can lump a lot of things under that um but usually that's they're usually just somebody calling something in that oh there's a car that's been driving around the block for twice and i mean it's suspicious well like you know usually there being nothing so there was 58 last month. Yeah, we're going down. Yeah, move on to public works. Dane has a uh, recommended approval. Go ahead if you want to come to the podium. I should just stay up here. <laughs> uh, so, what you see in front of you tonight is uh, we need to trade up our, our three year old mower and purchase a new one. The new one's been budgeted for. We've been doing this every year now for. Oh my, several years. So last year we did a sealed bid deal, just like what you see in front of you. That worked. Uh, the other option is uh, the place we purchased the mower from, uh, Hilltop Sales and Service, they've offered us a price already of, of 6,500. So that's the same price they offered last year. Of course, I think we've took in uh, just over 7,000. This one does have a few more hours on it this year. But same thing, three years old, three seasons on it. So uh, just looking for some direction, what the council would like to do. Is that coming out of the, the 2023 budget or the 2024 budget? 2024 budget is what we'll budget. be purchasing the, the new mower with. Yep, and the, the new mower is here. So at any time we could, we could make that trade up at the 6,500 or we could wait and, uh, Try the sealed bids, see if we can get some more money. I make a motion with him because we turned out good last year, right? Last time I would make a motion to do a sealed bid. For a second. But the, the sealed bid, as long as it's over 6,500. Yeah. We have a second before you discuss Her, it. Did you, did you second it? You uh, second? I'll second it, yes. All right, go ahead, Kirk. Well, I'm I'm just wondering if the sealed bid, are you looking for over 6,500 then? So we, we don't, we're not putting a reserve on it. It's probably put a 6,500 reserve on it. Because you get that offer for a trade in. And if that's how you guys want to do it, I mean. I think that's a good way to do it. Yeah, absolutely. We're already so offered that. We that yeah, at least I already that. offered that. Yeah. All right, we'll get the bids. We'll make a decision after that. So we're accepting bids only. With the reserve. With the reserve. And so if it if we don't hit that reserve, back to the drawing board, or how do you? Well, they offered you 6,500 for it, right? That's today. That's... But now if we're going to wait, you know, two months, I mean, he could potentially put in a bid, a sealed bid, right? For... 55, I mean, right. So that's 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 a reserve. The, yeah, we can we can definitely do a reserve on it. Let's say we just uh, what, what are they what are they full price? Uh 19,200. They did go up a little bit this last year. So if we do the sealed bids, um 
is it a considered to be an obligation to take the seal bids or we council still has the approval to not accept <laughs> i would i would look to jason for some some advice there the, the time it seems like either I... you can do one or the other but i'm not sure we can do both what's the question i'm sorry so so if we if put seal bids out and they come in at sixty three hundred dollars well, if you put a reserve in there that it has to be met at that, I mean, this is public already. If you're putting in the $6,500 reserve, that information will be so put in here. Then that would have to be the minimum base bid. For minimum base bid least, is you know, they could put it in $6,500 or higher. Um, anything less than that would be ignored because it doesn't meet the reserve. We wouldn't even, you wouldn't really even need to put it up, put up for sealed bids. You could put it in publicsurplus.com and put a reserve on it. Public surplus well, stuff all across the country. So, question I had. I had to buy it more than a few hours on it. You can go good there. The question I have is okay, so what if we do this and we don't get the bid for 6500 If we don't meet the reserve, what I'm hearing you say is he, he could really lowball us after that point. Today it's 6500 right? Tonight at 6,500, that's what he's offered. Mm -hmm. So if you go the sealed bid route, I think if he would be interested in, in bidding on it, he definitely could put a bid in for it, mm -hmm. right? No, but I mean, after the fact, if we say, all right, we didn't, we didn't make our reserve, do you want it? He could say, well, no. Yeah, that's a possibility. A thousand. Right. Or is it uh, because of the, the timeline that there is? Could we reduce that timeline instead of being like November 18th to make it like the end of October? So I extended it this year just because we didn't get many people last year. I think we took three bids. One was a, a, a non-bid. It was like $1,500, right? And then there was two other bids. So I'm just thinking extending the time, maybe get a few more bidders. Well, I don't want to lose the $6,500 either is what I was looking at as well. Yeah. Tonight's deal is $6,500. <laughs> Probably should take it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to interject here to say you've kind of shown your hands of what you want. You might as well just go with the guaranteed price at this point. Mm -hmm. So that's my two cents. Um, rather than waiting <clears throat> another two months here to see if we can get that or not. We're batting around. We're batting around a few hundred dollars, and just get rid of it and be done with it. Yeah. Stop. Just stop the discussion on it. Be, be gone. Hey, that guy knows what it's so, worth. Yeah. You know. Well, yeah, exactly. He knows what it's worth. Right. And, and he knows it's worth more than what he's well, he's offering to him. <laughs> well, so if we amend the motion to say a minimum reserve of sixty five hundred, that would be. You know, to get because of the conversation we've had now, that would probably be the proper way to handle it, in my opinion. Otherwise, it, I have no problem withdrawing if if we're worried about the time frame and the, and the guarantee. It's a mower with low hours. It's going to sell. What? It's a mower with low hours. It's going to sell. Yeah, it is low. Six hundred hours is nothing. Yeah. Not much so, broke in. So, so last yeah, year, we go through. last year, guys, we we got a little over seven thousand. So, yeah. talking five hundred bucks. This one does have more hours on it. These are more expensive. The the price on the new mowers have gone up. I mean, you used to go up too. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Will you accept uh, the amendment to make? Minimum of sixty five hundred, Jim. I will. Any other comment with the motion as amended for a minimum of sixty five hundred? Seeing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? It's approved. Thanks. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. Okay. Um, Water and sewer, Joe. 
We've got several things here. If you want to yeah, the first one is about some testing equipment at the wastewater treatment facility. Um, talking with people's service, they've identified some equipment um, that they are interested in purchasing to help them test the test wastewater as it goes through the treatment process. Specifically, they're interested in testing for phosphorus and nitrogen. Nitrogen, as it goes through the treatment process, knowing where those levels are at helps them make um, find, find adjustments to the treatment process um, and you know, more efficiently treat it. Right now, they have test results. They send those test res or tests out on a weekly basis, and they come back the next week. So it makes the process of making adjustments to the process slower. It's less, uh, less efficient. So... Um, they've identified these pieces of equipment uh, attached to my memo here um, that would uh, allow them to, you know, get test results in about 30 minutes. Um, they'd still have to send out to the lab and get official test results, but these kind of short, short duration test results help them make modifications to the treatment process. And so um, talking about it at the Sewer and Water Committee, we we agreed with them and thought it was a reasonable request. Um, I did reach out to the MPCA. I asked them if they would be able to fund this through the construction project. You know, as part of the project, we had an allowance. We bought lab equipment, uh, different, um, well, equipment. And he said that, yes, they would indeed allow us to process a change order and add this to the project. And so we essentially could finance it through the Clean Water Revolving Fund for 30% at, or 30 years at 1% interest. So um, to me, that really makes it attractive too. So we've identified these, these pieces of equipment plus the supplies needed to operate that equipment over a year. It's about $750 a year for the supplies, testing supplies to operate this um, spec spectral photometer. Uh, and the associated pieces. Um, so in total, it's about $10,500. Um, if you would approve this, I would talk to the contractor, um, Stab, have them order this. Uh, we have one more change order coming associated with some um, wasting pumps that need to be upgraded. Um, so we would add that to this and then bring that back to the council in the next month or two. But um, I'm kind of asking for your approval to get this process started, have the contractor order it, and then we'll follow up with the change order moving forward, if you want to. I make a motion to approve the equipment. Second. What's the life expectancy of this stuff? Good question. Uh, we we kind of kicked that around. We thought at least 10 years, maybe 10 to 20 years. Um, some of the pieces, you know, there's speakers and tongues and different things like that, as long as you don't break them will last forever. But the, the heart of the equipment, probably at least 10 years and probably longer if you take good care of it. You think that everybody out there is certified to use it already? Um, you don't need to be certified to use it. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, and in fact, it's a pretty diverse piece of equipment. So Kane might ultimately have uses for it. Um, in other parts of the city, but we're <clears throat> buying it for testing phosphorus and nitrogen in the wastewater stream. Dylan Christofferson is on our water and sewer committee. He's the maintenance supervisor for Rochester treatment plant, and he was he's the one that kind of initiated a lot of the yeah. information. And his he was very um, felt very comfortable with what we're doing here with this project. Rochester has two. Oh, what's that? Rochester has two of them. Oh, okay. Of this so same unit. Yeah. So he he said. It's I didn't recommend it, I guess. So. Yeah. How long does it take to get the certified lab testing back? About a week. Okay. So, so we can take action Maybe right away. Right. 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 Instead of waiting a week to change, make adjustments. Right. Yeah. All right. Any other comments? Seeing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Oh, same sign. Through. Next item. This is a fire hydrant gate valve equipment. Zach, Ainge, would you want to speak to that, please? Yep. <laughs> so, would you put this stuff in order? Are you counting your turn? Try and try and keep the OA. So, what you see in front of you tonight is a specification 
for uh, two things, fire hydrants and valves. I would like to see all the fire hydrants and all the valves in our in Orinoco be the same valve, the same hydrant. And with that, there's consistency. They operate the same. The fire department knows how to operate them. It's the same parts. It's the same. Everything's the same. I think the benefit here is we're consistent and development comes to town and we say, here, here's our spec. Here's our hydrant, right? So when they're ordering, when the contractor's ordering valves and piping and components, they know, hey, this is the spec right here. It's got to turn this way. It's got to be red. It's got to be uh, meet these specifications and uh, just having some consistency. That's what I'm going after. I make a motion that we turn around and, and have that consistency that there is. It only makes sense that we only have to have one set of spare parts that there are to be able to, to fix whatever there is that might go wrong. I mean, and, and everybody knows how to fix it too. So, no, I'm going to be a person from reading this. Second. Is it, is it seconded? Yeah. Please do. I'm under the impression from doing this, you get if you have a have a valve break, you just be able to change it without any excavation. Uh, depending what what kind of valve we're working on, if we can isolate it, or uh, but you know, excavation is is still on the table. It always right, yeah, always with water. You know, one thing uh, we're working with uh, Waters Company on this, as well as other towns. Wanamingo is one of them. We're developing the same hydrant, the same valve, the same everything. So, so if it's uh, if we run out of it, maybe one of Mingo's got it. But if they run out, of it, maybe we got. It. I mean, yeah. yep. okay. So this is a common valve, common manufacturer. I don't see any reason why we wouldn't be on base with it, keeping it consistent. Sure. Good strategy. I agree with you. Right? Yeah, I think it's good. SOPs, if you have SOPs around this stuff, they're consistent. So the question too for, for city staff is to come back with a change to the ordinance. Do we know what spec that is? There's there's code, city code, and there's ordinance. So you work with city staff then to update those? Finding where it is, and Joe can help here. Okay. All right. Usually, I don't see this stuff in the city ordinance. It's more of a policy. Um, Jason, I don't know how you feel about that. If you want to go through the trouble of updating the ordinance, it could be in the utility code. But if you can just adopt that as a policy or a standard of the city to implement, um, and that would meet the yeah. need, then it would save you a lot of trouble. It would fall under like public works policies instead of actually having to be in code because it's something that they more of a regular basis type thing they're doing it and you know keeping checking and standardized and make sure everything's good to go there so that's where it usually falls under why it falls under the policy side of it as their work duties if you will so in all reality is there anything we really need to do he just needs order to keep ordering same parts and keep them I, I think yeah i think a, kind of a decision from the council yeah. is yes we want to do this and have that on the record as a motion and approve approved that Kane can point to and say, yeah, the council said, told the, told me and told Joe that we want these hydrants. So, so I'll amend the motion to say that the uh, uh, center of specification for fire hydrant and gate valve be driven to uh, in the public works policies instead of city ordinances. So, so. That was that would be a friendly motion to that amendment. So, if, um, <clears throat> rather, that'll be a friendly. Was that? That'll I, be I a made friendly. the motion. Oh, okay. we'll certainly amend. Okay. For a second, no. Okay. Yeah, ask him if he'll accept the friendly amendment. Or if you'll accept the friendly amendment. Yes, I will. Okay. Any other comments? So, so all those in favor of the motion as amended, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Next item is a resolution for public hearing. In the packet, the resolution 2024 33, 
I'm calling for a hearing on assessments for Riverbend Estates sanitary sewer system improvements. <coughs> so I make a motion. We approve resolution 2024-33. No second that. Inc. Yeah, I got something up here. Yeah. Got it. Can I? So uh, the resolution includes the notice that will be published and mailed. Okay. Mm -hmm. And at the last, in the at the August council meeting, we had the public hearing, and now we're doing the assessment hearing for the improvements. Um, we have learned that the project is also this improvement is also going to be funded through the, you know, we executed a change order. The project's being funded through the Clean Water Revolving Fund. Mm -hmm. FPCA approved the change order. Um, that means that again, it's being finance through PFA and at the public hearing and within the resolutions that you have in front of you tonight, um, we told everybody that we would assess and the interest rate would be 5%. Well, given the fact that it's being financed through the Clean Water Revolving Loan Fund and we have an interest rate established on that, I think that we should amend the 5% and decrease it to 2.047% so that it's 1% above the bond rate that we're borrowing the money against. That's kind of the criteria that we've established and to be consistent and to not raise red flags at PFA. I think we should lower the interest rate that we would assess people um, to again, that 2.047. So within the notice that we publish, there's two, two spots where it says 5%, we change that to 2.047. And within the mail notice, we'd also change that. The notices are attachments to the resolution that you're considering today. So I wanted to bring this up to the council. Um, it's really to the benefit of the resident. Um, it's consistent with what we've done in the past, but I didn't want to change it without more consent. And so everything that's in the packet is consistent with what we had talked about previously, the 5%. But again, reflecting on it and knowing the funding uh, situation and knowing PFA would probably not like us assessing at a different rate, I'd recommend mm -hmm. that we amend the resolution or the exhibits within the resolution to that 2.047% interest rate, if that and makes and sense. And is this going to be uh, for the 10 years or would this yeah. go top for 10 years? Yeah, I think the 10 years is fine. We, Consistently talked about that too. Okay, just wanted to make sure. So I'll make a motion that we adopt the resolution with the amended 2.04%. I'll accept your as a friendly amendment because we've already made the 3.047. Yes. 0.047. Yeah. Yep. Got to be exact. Yeah. <laughs> it matters. We start getting interest rates. Any other comments? Absolutely. It's a great deal for this resident. So good. This is a resolution. So this is the void vote for the motion to approve resolution 2020-33, uh, calling for a public hearing on request proposed event assessments of River Bend Estates, which the sanitary sewers improvements at a 2.047%. With that, we're going to vote at all. Voice vote. Thank you. All right, of course. Hi. Councillor Pendergrass. Aye. Councillor Phillips. Aye. Councillor Richards. Aye. Councillor Devominic. Aye. Okay, that's approved. A um, couple of FYIs. Thank you, Ray, talked about those. Assessment rolls in your packet. There's a handout and a schedule, FYI. Before we leave the water and sewer, I would just make a comment that it's uh, Joe and Payne, if you could uh, address the comment or not, address and review the comments that Ted made regarding the area of the station floor as far as restoration. I, I can address the comments. Uh, first, there's been a number of comments about the seed type that the contractor used. Uh, the seed type is a specified seed type used by MnDOT, used by cities, used by counties throughout the state. It is a high quality seed mix. Um, that's what the contractor used. Really the trouble that the contractor has had is establishment. Um, anything that was seeded last year didn't get well 
established because it was really dry. And uh, they do have an established specification. Um, some of those areas have been reseeded or overseeded. Um, we've had uh, a wet first half of the year, the last month, it really hasn't rained. Uh, and the contractor has done a lot of seeding. So um, they have been coming in, they have been doing some overseeding. Uh, the city has also been spraying for weeds. Um, the restoration process takes time. Um, and uh, I guess I would just urge people to be patient. I know the process has gone on and on, but um, you know it takes weather, it takes time, and it takes um, some TLC in the contractor. Uh, is again responsible to establish that. We will continue to um, include that on the punch list. We look at these items, but it's going to take some time for those things to get established. The other thing that we ask of the residents is, you know, if you have the ability to water and take a, take advantage of the credit that the city's offering, that that would be great. But also, it's important to mow. Uh, mowing helps control weeds. Uh, it's important to mow at the right elevations too. We don't want people to scalp those grasses, but we want you know we want them you know two and a half three inches long. So cut a little bit higher, uh, but to control the weeds so that the grass can come up and, and fill in. So um, okay. So I guess the other thing is just and what was referenced was the ruts um, not being smooth. Is that all part of the review on your punch list to make sure that. Yeah, um, like we'll have to take a look at that. I guess I wasn't aware of that in that specific area, if that exists and there are you know, significant ruts that need to be addressed. But I know that the contractor put a fair amount of time and effort in last fall in Riverwood Hills um, manicuring that area. And I thought it did a pretty good job. But we can take a look at some of those areas. Um, but again, unfortunately, patience is... is yeah. yeah, I believe this is on the part part of it, which is city property that we're talking about with this, not not private property that there yeah. is. So, Kane, could you address any of that stuff that there is out there that he's talking about? Uh the mowing. The mowing can take place. We take we mow regularly. Uh, you know, like Joe said, it is a process. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, we can definitely mow around the, the list station. Those new trees you could talk about, and. Uh, the roughness, the roughness, the and, and yeah, could we, could we yeah, it's yeah. rough underneath. Yeah, rather than, and rather than fix ruts. <laughs> yeah, and I gotta say, I I've seen it. I've had people complain to me about it up in our area, in, in some other areas as well. Um, I've seen it come up. Uh, you know, it does come up as weeds. I've planted grass, and it comes up as grass and not weeds. Um, so, I I would my advice to us, to the contractor is, you know, take a little more time and do a little bit better job. Because uh, I've seen some yards, I, I was just contacted last weekend about two yards. Um, that was, they were pretty rough and they they said the same thing you did. Should, shouldn't this be as good as it was when you started? I encourage you guys to just come take a walk. That's right, because it's gonna cost the homeowner that much more money. Well, and this is part of, you know, city that there is. Whether could you go take a look at it, Kane, and yep. see what what that's all about? Yep, we sure can. We've been working with with both contracts, all contractors, developing punch lists, the the seeding dates and the restoration efforts are there, and we've just it, it takes a little bit of magic to get that seeding down. Yes. You you can have all the right ingredients, but there's a little bit of magic to it too. And I will say, not all not all is bad, because I've seen it up by our area. They came back and redid some too, and it it looked nice. Well, we had a lot of serious rain this spring too that <coughs> caused it to run up pretty yeah. good too. I'm sure it didn't help. But yeah. And the question, right. the question, the surface is it is there a clay on it or is it all is it black dirt? Because the clay isn't going to grow up to start with. I'm I'm going to say one thing uh, for any other citizens that have concerns, please bring them to our office. You know, we do get these occasionally, and I do reach out to Joe and Kane immediately. Um, so we're not waiting to, for our city council meeting. You definitely swing by our office and talk with us, and we'll start getting that process going. Because not the first time we've had, you know, there have been a few throughout the town. So we usually just try to get them going as quick as we can. All right. So 
spread the word if people are having problems and call us, stop in, whatever. So, okay. All right, um, planning and zoning, couple of resolutions, properties. Cameron, can you want to speak to the person about the action? Yeah, so so this one, it was a, a variance um, regarding setbacks and we, <laughs> I don't know how to this in, 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 but, but this one, what was it, 90 days? Yeah, yeah, there was yeah. on the, the count for 90 days too. So right. So planning and zoning made a recommendation that the council approve this. Um and and for the simple reason that we we were kind of we were kind of in a in a in an arm bar on this one because it, it came to us so late we would not meet the deadline. So really, and it wasn't the homeowner's fault that it it got to planning and zoning late. Um, you know, ninety days late, and I know it was resubmitted too. So we made the recommendation that it be approved. Um, with I mean. There's a fear that people might look at this and and say that we're setting precedents, but we can we can point at the at the timestamps. So there was a memo so, on the desk saying that the September 11th was the incorrect date. She had on your desk tonight from Stantec planning services. No, the erroneous the deadline is October the 11th. Mayor and Councilman, this is Will Hutchins with Stantec. I'm filling in for Phil. Yeah, we had noted that during the Planning and Zoning Commission. Hi. <laughs> um, yes, we we did have a wrong date on that, and Phil was just kind of like making sure that that showed up in that memo to just make sure that it's very clear. It was recognized that the date that was on the Planning and Zoning was wrong, but we were still pushing up against that date either way, as, as um, Councilman's noted. So, yeah, it would have come up to be October 11th, which was. Um, um, we would have missed the planning and zoning and city council for next month. You know, so originally we got it on uh, June 12th and we didn't get it at planning and zoning until just this last month. So there was quite a bit of time that went by that should not have gone by. I mean, because there are things in here that, that we didn't agree with that we would like to have changed that, that would have been given the, the property person a chance to be able to make those adjustments of what we had. So due to that, we don't have a chance to make those adjustments. And one in particular we were looking at is if you look at our code, it says a 25 foot setback that there is from the lot line. And uh, we were looking and trying to uh, find a way to have it be at least 16 feet instead of 10. Uh, but again, just due to the fact we don't have time to do it, we are, we're put behind the eight ball and we have to approve it. So it's, it's something that we have to really take a look at, that we get all the material on time for us to make the, the proper decision for planning and zoning and to bring it to council. But you did approve, you're coming to the council with recommendation? With the recommendation. Because we, because. Yeah, we have no choice. Okay. You know, and it was because of the lack of not getting it to us sooner. So. On that note, I will say, oh. I do have a timeline. I did after that meeting go back and talk with Will as well as Phil and get a timeline of events. Because obviously this started in 2023 before my time. I was trying to figure out what happened there. Um, and then it was wasn't approved for uh, not having accurate information in 2023. It was reapplied in 2012. How the application process goes is we accept the paperwork into our office to be sent off to be reviewed. We're not planning and zoning people. We don't have the, the education for that to know, you know, what is what is exactly needed and what's not and what's, you know, what is going to be required by on their end. So that stuff gets sent off to be reviewed. Um, during that time, uh, by July, it was noted that there was still um, not enough accurate information through uh, the zoning through Stantec. And they had spoken with the applicant to get that information. Um, and it was communicated that, you know, their, their person who does that was out of town. 
and you know they were still waiting on those new drawings. We never heard anything back from that applicant. So I look at it, and my understanding is technically that application was never officially submitted. So the time clock doesn't actually start on that until we have it all done. With that, my understanding is also 10 or 15 days after it's brought in. We have 15 days. 15, 15. days. If, it's, if, if we don't have all that stuff, which they did note there was stuff incomplete. From, if we don't have it, it's deemed incomplete and they got to reapply. Right. So we've kind of hit this weird spot of where we kind of missed some things that fell through the cracks. There's a lot of other stuff going on. Technically, it didn't need an extension because technically it was incomplete. It never should have been. It should have been reapplied for. This is just a, a learning. Yeah. I mean, but it's one of those ones. I don't believe that you're hemmed into any particular spot based off of the information we have with a timeline well the way the the way the process is now defined it did but to your point i think this is an opportunity number one i mean this it, it called something out and i think this is an opportunity to perhaps make a change in our process that maybe that application is not a finalized application until planning and zoning it goes to planning and zoning then then it becomes finalized because then it takes the the onus off Renee and company um, because you know there there may be things that that uh, deputy clerk doesn't know that needs to be in there. Do we have so, the, do we have the ability to make the determination when the timeline starts? Because when I would, right. I, would, I would I personally would assume that if I made an application to the city. The day I signed it, dropped off the city, they accepted it. That'd be the start. Right, start of the day. exactly. But I think you know, I think it's an opportunity to look at what we're doing. I would like to. Think I think Santec wants to reply. Uh, I just wanted to note on that. Um, are you meaning that the from the point of application within fifteen days, you as a board, you you as the or not you, but the, sorry, the planning and zoning commission would have an opportunity to see it and deem that that would be the actual action, deem it complete. I think that would you run into a timeline issue because of the legal ad notification requirements and the public uh, adjacent property owner notification. So you're going to spend money and expense to start that as well because you have to get those APOs out and or adjacent property owner notifications out in that legal ad in in such an amount of time to meet the newspaper's publishing requirements. It's just not enough time. So yeah, um, yeah we we I think we'd want to. Keep it as a default to step up. We 100% agree with Jason on this is a great opportunity. And, and to your point, uh, Councilman, uh, you know, it's an opportunity to take a look at our process and make sure that we're uh, syncing things up and not letting things like this slip through the cracks. You know, we, it was a busy time. I think you all were, uh, uh, you know, aware of some of the development requests that were going on at the time. So it kind of was distracting a little bit, but we we, we, we fully admit that um, there's an opportunity here. So just wanted to add that point here. Yeah, and I'm not saying that it has to be when it, and, and it makes sense what you're saying, Will. Sure, yes. Yeah. That it doesn't have to be when planning zoning gets it, but I think we need to all understand and and allow the applicants to, to know when does that process start? Because me Absolutely. as an applicant, I would think it started when I handed it in, but... I usually when people yeah. hand their applications in, I say, okay, I look at it, I'm going to send this in to our Stantec people, they will let me know if it's deemed complete and when we can schedule a public hearing. So I do not tell them or let them even think that it's just going to be automatically done. So really what I'm hearing is it's really not finalized until Santec does their review and says, okay, this is a, this is a final. Until they tell me it's complete and complete. we start the clock at that point in time. Yeah. And it's supposed to be that 15 days, but this one went past that because we were trying to get the information from the applicant mm -hmm. and we were never getting the official documentation that Stantec was requesting from the applicant, which is yeah. why it continued mm -hmm. to just go and go. And go. The, the 15 days is from the time they drop off paperwork if they're missing anything to complete the process by having the remainder, no, the remainder think, of their paperwork. That's my understanding. Yes. And I think it's an important part too to keep in mind that <clears throat> within that 15 days, if they don't have everything complete, they have to start all over again. Yeah. You know, and, and to be able to have a start date so we know what we're working with. And so I think we miss that too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there actually is one clock that starts when they hand it in. 
the 15 day clock starting right away. Mm -hmm. Right. And so but if they don't do it within 15 days, then they have to get another restart date that there is and reapply again to have the correct date that there is on it. So I think it actually automatically, then if it doesn't get a completeness check and nothing was comments or returned, it just can proceeds from the date of the application submittal. So in this case, we are working from that application submittal date, date that um, was used. Don't quote me on that, but I recall Phil telling me that I'm not a planner in Minneapolis uh, or in Minnesota. I do a lot now in Minnesota, but I'm, I haven't been doing it for more than a year. So um, Phil V, the resident expert, but I'm almost 100% certain that's what he told me. Okay. I make a motion we approve resolution 2024-34. I think there were a couple other things that were in there too that were changed. Second. I mean, do uh, yeah, Councilman and um, Mayor, there was um, some changes that Phil yeah, had well, added well, to well, the well, resolution, well, and they're they're there for you and highlight to decide if you'd like to include his recommendations to add those in. They could certainly be omitted. He said it's up to you. Uh, well, he I thought that the solar panels were are, were kind of. A, part of this whole thing. So he wanted to make sure there was some kind of mention to about him in the, the resolution. That was his justification. Yeah, so what there was on, on this is that we were looking just at the garage. We weren't looking at anything else that was equated to solar. So it was where the garage placement was. So uh, if you look at the resolution on 2024-34, it says, whereas the application wishes to install roof mount solar panels on the roof of a new garage and Whereas the applicant has conducted analysis of the, of the solar potential on the site. So when we turned around and, and reviewed it and went through um, E and Z, we had, right, we had some things removed. I think there's all those highlighted yellow parts. Yeah, I'm just looking at, uh, it's not just for the whereas, there was one through six. That on that, you know, let's go back to the old one. Uh, the original red. I got to go with the original one, and then I'll explain it off of that. Something. Yeah, and, and the resolution will always be just a little bit different than the findings yeah, so, of fact, but yeah, yeah. So what we did on the recommendation on the conditions of approval of a variance on number four, uh, we turned around and had replaced. Uh, we'll have reasonable solar access. So that number four read, the only practical location for the garage on the site is that it will be on the north side of the property within 10 feet of the frontal line required by the variance. And number five has been removed. Number six has been removed. And number seven actually becomes number five where the variance request meets the criteria of approving the variance, you know, in section 151.401 of the uh, Orno goes on the code. So the, the solar was completely removed from that. Yeah. So, and reason being, so we don't care about the solar. We just care about, about the building and the set. Right. Yeah. So, so highlighted yellow is coming out of the residence. Well, no, it's actually, it, I thought it would have been on there. I, I'm looking at the one we got today. Okay, okay, I missed maybe that was Jim and I were trying to put them. Thank you for checking the report. Maybe I missed that, but yeah. Yeah, this we just got this yeah, and then today for this. Yeah, so the okay, you got that one. I didn't get yeah. that one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it should be on the desk with that whole stuff. You guys got that up. And then okay. with I have the where and uh, Okay, yeah, there was taken out of it. You're right on the back part of that. He's not going to do the solar. That's up to him to do what he's going to do with the solar. We weren't making our decision yeah. based on solar. We were making our decision based on uh, the garage. location of the garage. Exactly. So he took up. He took up all of the yellow was taken out. Yes, correct. Right. So we have a motion. I guess the, yeah, the clarification on that the yellow is actually new. So there was stuff that was in the the, the findings that went to the PNZ. Uh, they were then um, removed by the PNZ, and they were 
something similar but different because Phil felt it was important that the application mentioned solar panels. So there should be some in the resolution that kind of speaks to the solar panels. He added these back in just to make sure that we're, we're covering all of our, our, our uh, um, the I's and dotting our T's here to make sure that everything's uh, in place. It really is still, it's irregardless uh, whether or not he put solar panels on it or not, but it's just that the application mentioned it to probably have something in the resolution to, to reflect that. And I apologize for not catching that at that meeting. Yeah, uh, we we purposely took that out of planning and zoning, and that's what planning and zoning uh, voted on and approved is not have anything in there at solar. So we don't want to have that in there. That's what we had agreed upon. So. And, and you can remove the yellow highlight uh, for Phil. He said he didn't think that it would be a problem if it was removed as well. So. Yeah, well, we want to have that removed. That's what we agreed on with planning and zoning. But there are solar panel ordinances in our planning and zoning, right? But that's not what we were looking at. Um, no. We were making it so we didn't want to confuse the two. Whatever he wants <laughs> to do with this building, he can do with his building. Okay, this was putting the garage in is, is what we were we're concerned with, and that's where our decision came from. Variance was based on location of the garage. So, yeah. Ryland, you said there is solar panel things in our ordinance. Is that something that we need to be addressing here, or is it something? No, it's just I think they just address this rough mounted versus solar panels on the ground. Oh, yeah, it doesn't really matter here. You know, they took them out of the variance. Okay, so. Um, we want to have the yellow out. The motion is to have the yellow highlighted removed in the right. final form. Resolution. Your second? We had the first. Who's already second? You the first. Then the second. the second, then to have that removed. You made the motion. I did. I made a motion before we started talking about all the changes. We made the second. And I have to make a friendly motion yeah. to have those removed. So, yeah, the highlighted yellow. Yeah. Okay. Uh, before we devote, is the motion clear now? Exactly what we're doing. And so, Councilman Phillips made a friendly motion in your eye course to remove the yellow sections, and you accepted. Yes. Okay. I just want to make sure I got it right. Yes, that's right. Thank you. Voice vote. So. Mayor Eckhorst? Aye. Councilor Phillips? Aye. Councilor Pendergraf? Aye. Councilor Richards? Aye. Councilor Dijanek? Aye. Very good. Thank you. Resolution 20, 24-35 with the NZ. <clears throat> and this is for um, side lighting and, and uh, Vacation of drainage and utility easement that there is at uh, 1376 Riverwood Court Southwest. Uh, PNZ uh, recommendation is to uh, approve this. <clears throat> and it was a pretty simple uh, situation that there was for, there's nothing backing up this property. So it, it just made sense to what was going on. Joe had already gone out and taken a look at it as well. And uh, it goes along with, with the approval of that. So do we need a public hearing to do this vacation? And we already had a public hearing that there was at, at uh, planning and zoning. Okay. So we'll make a motion. I'll make a motion to approve it. Second. Any other discussion? Comments? Voice vote. Mayor Eichers? Aye. Councilor Phillips? Aye. Councilor Pendergrass? Aye. Councilor Richards? Aye. Councilor Dubominic? Aye. Mm -hmm. Mayor and uh, Councilman, I'm going to take off for the evening if that's okay. I'm mm -hmm. on the road here today at a Panera Express, so I'm going to take off. Thank you. Bye -bye.
fire department members. We make a motion we approve the hiring of Jace Schulte and Andrea Ishpager. Second. <laughs> Any comments? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Both same sign. Uh, next item is a DNR matching grant for $4,000 toward pagers. I'll make a motion to approve. I'll second them. Still part of their 2024 budget. I believe that's correct. Yeah, so this grant that they would get would cover half. They get like this. They get 4,000 with matching 4,000, which was in their 2024 budget. Any other comments? Did we have pagers in the bunch? I thought it was. I thought it was. Yeah, I thought it was. I thought it was. Pager and radios. Yeah, pager and radios. Okay. Uh, seeing no other comments, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Same sign. Approved. Uh, next item is a memo uh, from the fire department. Something I don't think they've done before. Is maybe they have in the past years, but. Yes, yeah. Well, Jimmy, you want to speak to it? The firefighter? No, uh, I'm the explorer program. Try to catch up with on the next floor. Uh, yeah, I will. Uh, what they were looking at is they have an opportunity, and I was just let me get to that part. Um, to bring in some junior uh, firefighters that, that are working um, on trying to become firefighters. So it's out of high school, younger kids, if there are. Um, so they wanted to turn around and give them an opportunity to kind of get connected with, with us um, and, and run things up. What I would recommend with this is that we turn around and do it with a small group to get started so we have an idea what this is. Maybe try on a trial basis one or two and just see how it fits in to go along you know, with everything else that we're doing for training. Uh, before we open that up for a lot of people coming in. With that, I'll say this. I was previously a law enforcement police explorer in my youth. Um, I don't think that one to two, if that would be sufficient for a program, starting a program. I think opening it up, I agree with having cap numbers for it. But I think you might need more than just a couple. If we can get a couple, I don't know what they're. Yeah, I don't know what it is. Yeah, let's see. But I would say like four to six would be a good starting range um, to really see if we can get something there. Because I know from the police side of it, when I was in that, you know, we had anywhere from 10 to 30 or 40, depending on where you were at. Um, I don't know what this program was before. I don't know how active people were or not. Um, but, you know, it definitely is a great program. And I think it can lead into, you know, people going into the field. So I think it's it's a good thing to have, but I think you might want more than one or two. Well, my, my concern too is to make sure with what we're talking about, because our turnout here is now $4,500 a piece. And, um, you know, you're looking at, at these people coming in. I don't want us to be burdened with that uh, turnout gear cost that there is. With From us. reading through this, I don't think that they're that involved. No, they should not be anywhere involved. near any of that kind of stuff. Okay. Okay. They'll get some okay. basic personal protective gear, but it won't be anything. Won't be determined. Yeah. 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 I just, you know, <laughs> concerned that there oh, was. Yeah. I mean, Absolutely. that's what things we're watching right now. Yeah. Yeah. But I like the idea of, you know, Starting out with a smaller number, but I, I'd say, I'd say two, probably six, six to ten. Oh, maybe, I wouldn't go maybe ten. cap it at six. <laughs> you know, you just, so they, extra just so they can get their, over yeah, there is not get their feet way. wet on it, see how it's going to turn out. I, I, I think that uh, what Jason said between between two and six, I wouldn't go to ten. No, I okay. would no smaller I, number because I mean we're I'd just say six. We're climbing over everybody over there now with the number of firefighters that we have when we do. Uh, all in all, you're probably talking about a radio. 
you know, uh, with somebody or sure. have them given just I'd say usually for explorers you're getting like a basic radio type thing. They run explorers off of different channels. Usually they're not put on because there's there's certain standards you have to meet when you're broadcasting across law enforcement channels and things like that. You're not gonna put a 14 year old kid with that kind of radio because the likelihood they're gonna slip up and say something they shouldn't. <laughs> so, so Kane, do you have any comments on this? No. Okay. Oh, leader. Are you guilty? Yeah, come on, come on out. Just come to the podium, game. <laughs> and, 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 what your thoughts are? Yeah. Yeah. So, Kane Dolan, Assistant Fire Chief. Yes. Uh, these uh, children will not be going on calls. They will not be actively working with fire. They are more of a. a They'll just be shadowing us at the right. fire station, you know, doing maintenance, uh, very minimal training. You know, I don't know if we want 16 year olds climbing ladders or putting on SCBAs or I think they can try on some gear. I think they can, but as far as like asking them to do things, I mean, the city needs to kind of think about, you know, how they're going to ensure those children. That's the big yeah. part. So. But they're not going on calls. They're not driving vehicles, and uh, they're very limited. Can you speak to this comment about number six? Will the equipment, personnel, protective equipment, uh, the focus for the activity being done? What does that mean? So right now, that high school program, they're they're working with all the local departments, coming up with used gear that fits these kids for the program. Right. So uh, there's three Orinoco area kids signed up for it and so we're thinking this is an uh, option for them to get involved with the real department you know a volunteer department mm -hmm. plus be involved with the with their high school program so i think it's there to complement those students in those programs i don't know if we're going to be taking on more students outside if they're not enrolled in that program basically you know I mean? you're talking high vis and pair of safety glasses and Right. They're going to be standing at a, a distance from whatever is going to happen. So in your discussions with your fire department, have you talked about what you want to cap it at or versus the council telling you? We haven't discussed it. You know, so we did just the idea came up. Oh, okay. okay. And you say there's, there's three Orinoco area kids right now enrolled in the high school program. We're going to be nice to offer that program to them to complement their education and I think it's a good thing. Yeah. So, so you're just asking for support mm -hmm. to approve the reestablishment. So I make the motion to approve the reestablishment of the Explorer program. I'll second that. With a cap of three? Yeah, let's we'll start with the three first that are here and going over. Okay, was that three people or is that three different program, like area programs? Mm -hmm. Three kids. Three kids. I, I don't think we need a, a maximum. I think we'll know no, when we're full. Do do. I think we'll know when there's too many. Yeah. Okay. That okay. might be one, it might be two. <laughs> well, I guess the big thing is insurance. Is it insurance to be an issue? I'm going to bring the deputy up since he's here. I'm going to bring the deputy up since he's here and see if he has any comment. Does the cop have any comment on the fire? Explore program? No, no, no. It's like, yeah, just yeah. on his own because he's sitting yeah. back there. I just, yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I was still in this. That's okay. <laughs> I'm on his report. All in favor of the reestablishment signify by saying aye. Aye. Second. Sorry. Didn't feel a second. Sorry, Phil. Thank you. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> First responders, make a motion to approve a Jace Schulte and an Andrea Fishpager. First responders, second. Comments? Seeing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Sign. Approved.
parks and trails. Um, there's a late email this afternoon saying there's no form for the September 23rd meeting. So. Moving to the first of October. Sorry, they're moving it to the first of October. The first one back to the normal. Yeah. 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 FEMA flood damage. Uh, quick update there: we Olmstead County did not meet the threshold for FEMA funding. Uh, so right now we're uh, the uh, Jonathan Jacobson, our Olmstead County Emergency Director, is pursuing getting a uh, state assistance authorization from the government, I guess, it's for 88000 From the state of Minnesota. From the state of Minnesota, right. And so the ramification of that is instead of 100% funding uh, with a presidential declaration where FEMA would pay for 75, the state would pay for 25, well, which is 100, that doesn't happen under this scenario where the state would step in and provide assistance the state would pay for 75 percent of these this flood damage and the city would be holding the 25 percent and so you know assuming that moves forward we'll have to make a decision hopefully next month as to um what in, what repairs you want to do um and you know most of the park stuff needs to be repaired where the kind of the question in my mind that comes in is within the lake bed there was some damage and does it make sense to spend money on that even if it's 75 state 25 percent city um do you want to do that or do we are we a little bit more selective in terms of what we we choose to repair you know on a, so i think the first step is let's see what the state does and make sure that they're going to step in and do the 75 25 and then you know ideally next month we'll have a discussion as to what indeed um, makes sense to the council, you know, 25% of $80,000 is still real money. So um, um, we'll have to have that discussion. So we have used, based on previous invoices from Kane, taking care of the trees and the parks, also done with some mulch under the river park playground material. So we have invoices towards that $88,000 figure. So. Uh, we'll summarize those with what we got from the state, and then we can decide what we want to do with the lake bed. So, and a lot of Kane's time and Public Works crew time will be paid for through this too. They've obviously put a big effort into cleaning things up, and those mm -hmm. are, those hours are reimbursable. It's just a an accounting exercise, which is probably a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, more to come. Oh yeah. Okay, next item is our city administrative report, agenda items. So the report. Uh, yeah, real quick, I didn't type up the report. There was there was a few big things that went on, a lot of was budget stuff, but um I attended the Ready Community Housing Roundtable uh with the mayor and council and Phillips out in Byron um on the 22nd of August. That was a great event to meet with local um city representatives and administrators as well as local contractors and they kind of had a a forum with each where they would sit up there and they had a panel uh that discussed you know kind of what they're seeing going through with housing and development in the area uh, this includes like byron chatfield casson pine island plainview and stewartville uh they were all there present and given it um this is a, a great group to be a part of there's a lot of connection that can be made there between developers and cities um, and that also provides a lot of uh, work uh, between the two or between the groups um, this ready group um, which is the rochester area economic development incorporated um, they represent all the smaller cities not including they don't include rochester this is something for the cities around rochester to help them with you know obviously rochester's got its own growth going uh, but they are there to help support the surrounding cities as they try and deal with Rochester's growth with, and I'll, I'll put it frankly, Mayo's growth. I mean, Mayo is just coming in with billions of dollars for new, new facilities and new employees. And they're looking at 1500 a year or something like that. I heard coming in. I mean, there's, there's a massive increase of, of people that are going to be coming to the area. Um, with this, this is a group that we can join. I think it's a good investment. They do an annual fee that can be broken up over 
however we want to we pay it um, to be part of this community's council. So that's something I've, I've been looking with and I kind of met with um, maybe it's Chris um, or Kirk from the group. Sure. Kind of, yeah, kind of talked with them a little bit about it and got some more information. So I'm still kind of looking into it, figuring things out as to where that's at. Um, I attended the Clerks Academy up in St. Paul, went through, got some more training on what it is to be a clerk. So learned a lot more about, you know, part of my duties and what I'm going through and got a great networking there for a couple of days in the beginning of September. Um, we spent, let's see here, uh, the, it's been due five budget workshops we did to get the preliminary budget ready. Um, spent a lot of time the months prior working with Kane and the other folks in the city trying to get their budgets prepared for those. So that was a, a great, great time doing that. Um, I appreciate you guys all showing up for that and, and help making that a success. I think we're able to really put together a good budget that, you know, while yes, there's going to be some increases, I think we were able to lay out and spell out why exactly we thought we needed these increases and where. And hopefully we improve the budget in an area that's more transparent for the citizens as well um, to be able to put out there from previous years. And I'll say, Jason, to your, to your account, you had this very organized. It went very yeah. smoothly. Yeah. Trying to. It's so um, I was also selected to serve on the MCMA Annual Conference Planning Committee this year. The MCMA is the Minnesota County slash City Manager Association group. Um, so they have different committees. Uh, and at the annual conference this last May, I put in to be on a committee and I was selected to be on that committee that's going to be planning the 2025 annual conference. So we'll get to uh, start with that actually next week. Uh, we have our first committee meeting where we start getting that ready and that entails everything from like bringing in speakers and just making sure everything runs smoothly for that event. So I'm kind of excited for that and gets our name out there for Orinoco um, to the rest of the, the state as well. So. Um, I also got to do a quick site visit for the Dollar General Market. Um, it's coming along pretty well. I know I also saw today they were, I did that previously, but today I drove by and they were, looks like they were loading in. I think they're getting ready to open soon. I, I saw there today and they're doing the hard work, putting the hardware in there. Yeah. Day. I don't know. The in refrigeration. And then another the crew comes in to stop okay. I know they're getting, they're getting close there, but they're unloading a bunch of stuff. I saw them there working today. So that's moving along. Yeah. Um, another update on the Mary Nash house that we've been working on. Um, I don't know if anybody's been by there, it's down. Yeah. The house has been torn down and is in the progress or process of being removed. They've got three trash, huge moving yeah. trash container bins full of stuff. Yeah. Um, you know, I know we had talked about it in previous about possibly having to move forward after tonight with more legal action. I don't think that's going to be the case. We're going to continue to work with her. She's moving stuff. Uh, she did call in today to talk and let us know that they've got that going down. There were some mechanical issues. They did have to stop with the teardown stuff and, and move in, into bins today because there was something with the equipment, some issues. But then after that's done, then it's the sheds that are there that will be removed, and then they're going to be bringing in dirt to flatten everything out. So nice. there's no basement or anything like that on the house, so it should be pretty quick and smooth. So that is coming along. Um, I spoke with the Cedar Woodlands 2 group um, and with Mike. Uh, they let their attorney go. So working with Mike, they actually reached out to us and let us know, sent me an email here, and I communicated with them, told them I would let you guys know as well. They're in the process of um, working with another attorney and getting assistance on uh, the steps needed to take out the transfer to do the um Quick claim deed. So that process is moving forward. Um, I know there have been some discussions a couple of meetings ago in closed session and stuff. I uh, feel confident with Mike, who's not here. That's, that's another thing. Um, but, um, you know, we're, we're working with him that is moving forward. So that's going on the right track as well. Um, Mike's not here. We only had a few things that we we're going to discuss anyways with him. I'm trying to cut back on some of his hours that we've built a lot this year. So uh, let's see here. The next, the last thing on my quick agenda for this is cannabis. Um, talking with Mike, you know, uh, my understanding was the city adopted something last year that gave us through this year uh, with the cannabis and the businesses. Um, he recommended that we council guide us, myself and our attorney to start working on 
putting something together to be able to adopt something by the end of the year because we got to have something in place as for as an ordinance about how we want to uh, what we want to allow for businesses by state law we do have to allow um, cannabis business but I think there's something there's, yeah it's, it's got to do with the population so it would yep. be one for us the biggest thing is going to be where you know where would that need to be located um, you know, and that's going to be for the city to decide as to where they would want to allow a, a business like that. I know um, planning zoning, just as an FYI, was it last year? That we, we started talking about the, mm -hmm. the county. Well, that's when we put, put the county 25 board that there was. So, yeah. so, so I'll, the, I'll work on sending something out to the, the planning zoning group to start thinking about for them to have ready for their next meeting so they can kind of give some guidance as to what they think. Um, but just want this is a heads up. We want to start this process now, yeah. so we're not like, oh, it's December. We got to have something by January. Um, so hopefully, we can get that going. Again, that, that's for a total of twelve thousand five hundred people. Okay, which yeah. uh, which is different than what we're here. So we'll go back to what's going on with Olmsted County, and how many they're going to allow inside Olmsted County, and where that's going to be placed at. So it might not, you know. Well, so there's, there's two that. options. We either allow it or we allow Olmstead County to make the decision and they can place them where they want to. So it's up, to, I think it behooves us to make our decision as to where we want to for the city and allow one. Whereas Olmstead County gets, I think, you get like 14 or something, something that they have uh, and they can allow placement wherever they want to. So I think, you know, talking with other city administrators and with our attorney, we need to make sure we have something where we're designating where we would want to allow that business. So that would be our tax revenue if we had it here. Yes, and that brings uh, into the, yes, and that brings into other things where we need to make sure. And we've already kind of started this in our office with our fee schedule and making sure we've got appropriate fee schedules, um, as well as having appropriate fees for business licenses and things like that, because it's going to come into there's some regulation. There, there's a lot of stuff that comes with this. So we are working on it. We're working forward, but it kind of that guidance of. Council to say yes, continue on, let's do this and, and get this. Was the Office of Cannabis Management still a thing in disarray? Oh, no, it didn't really work. It was kind of, kind no, of, kind of it started and then it was, I think it was, it was it July 1st that they ended up kind of putting everything together that they really got the organization going. They do have three approving people. Periodic updates from the office from the management. And they've been reaching out to me as a city administrator and they reach out to other city administrators and they're, you know, they're there to help and guide. So, but it was one of those things that, you know, we're going to start moving forward with, with that. And, and we want to make sure we're, we're ready and not cover their pants down come the end. Let me know where it is. I'll open up a Twinkie stand. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Something else? No, that's kind of the main part of the report. Like I said, we'll get into budget and then I've got um, from and then uh, software stuff left over from last month. Again, I apologize. I was sick last month. So, okay. So we have our resolution 2024 32. <laughs> Approve our preliminary 2025 budget and preliminary tax levy. So I make a motion. We approve the resolution. For a second. I'll second. For discussion, Jim. All right. Hey, okay, uh, with this, real quick, I'll just go into this. So I did print off for you folks the copy of the. Uh, um, Excuse me, the preliminary budget here. Everything in here is what we, we went over. Um, I did send out an email notification today, a little bit later in the afternoon. There was one addition under EDA. Uh, I went back after we had talked about EDA in our workshop. I went back and talked with Rebecca uh, when she was in here, and they had EDA had asked for 15000 for small business loans. Small business loans is something that they would use to help with businesses coming in for economic development, be able to loan them money, and we would get money back with a, I believe it's with an end of small interest rate off of it as well. Um, so it's something that would be a self-revolving fund. It would be, you know, so basically maintaining itself. Um, and we could contribute to in future years to be able to provide more opportunities to other small businesses, but to at least get them going. They did understand that you know, it was a possibility it may get cut, but they they were requesting fifteen thousand. So that's the only change from what we had gone over in our workshops. 
We have page. a page on that. That's the very last page of this. EDA is the last section right before the final. Line 427 is in red. Oh. Um, in the packet, there is kind of a, a one page preliminary budget, one page sheet that just gives a, a quick breakdown, if you will, of, of each um, what I considered a section and just kind of what the expenditures are, just so we had that out there um, for people to be able to see like, okay, this is what we're looking at for the, the numbers for the budget this year for the expenditures and the revenues. Um, I also included in the email a PDF. This was that breakdown sheet that we had discussed during our workshops. This sheet, um, this is a, a snippet of that Excel uh, document. This is what talks about the state information, Minnesota state information that they put out from the latest budgets, which I think was the end of 2023. I went through and selected all the surrounding cities that I could from Olmstead, Goodhue, Washington, Wabasha, Dodge, and Mower County, Mower, Mower, um, and the surrounding cities. And basically what I did was I took, okay, here's what their LGA was. Um, this was their their city tax rate that they had, and this was their population. So you could kind of see where we compare to the surrounding areas. Again, this is 2023. So if you look at this, with this year's numbers, even with this year's numbers, we're starting to get into the rate that cities surrounding us were at two years ago. But you're talking the tax rate again. Yes, I am talking the tax rate again. Not, that is the number we're looking at. We're not talking the left. That's correct. I'm looking at the tax rate. Okay, so I'm just pointing out the fact for everybody to understand. Yep, there's different numbers we, to we, look at. We have a tax capacity of 3.117 million. Mm -hmm. Probably that, that, was last, that was last year's. For 2024. Last year's was 3.11. Yeah. 3.11 and a 43% tax rate. 41.6. 43.6. Got, it, got, it got adjusted a little bit in December last year. But brought it down to 41.6. Brought it down to 1.248 million is what the tax levy was. Right now we're looking at tax levy this year of 1.736 million, 488,000 over last year. Mm -hmm. A big factor that we are, like you said, we talked about on these workshops, you know, we're increasing the roads, street and roads budget this year significantly. Um, as you heard tonight, there was concerns about roads. Um, I think that's something that is important. Uh, there's, a, there's just a lot of increases that come with running the city and the, the wastewater treatment facility. And mm -hmm. uh, I, I understand that. Yeah, I'm just explaining. So those, when they're here and they're sure. hearing, you know, what are the Everybody's support. listening. So where does this tax capacity number come from? It comes from the county. They, they say how what we're allowed to tax. It's in, and then this rate is only, this rate is determined what percentage or levy is of that tax rate. Of what we're built able to tax, correct? Say that again. The tax capacity is the hundred percent number we're allowed to tax. Yep. So we're the rate, the rate is at fifty one percent or fifty two percent. You said I believe fifty two point four is the new tax rate. That's the new tax rate. Yes, based off of the numbers of, of the of the total tax capacity. The total tax capacity for twenty twenty five is three point yeah. three seven five million. You said. Mm -hmm. So our actually our capacity went up. Two hundred and fifty thousand from the year before. Right. And sometimes that num actual number we get that number in December, so we're still well, actually, dealing with an estimate. But it's going to rise. We know but that. the tax capacity has no effect on anybody in here. The tax capacity is a made up number. Well, it's market so value, you're right? It's it's basically a made up number. The number that our that our town needs to be concerned with. Is, well, it's, is, I'm not going to say it's going to be a number. Well, it is. Somebody, somebody, somebody brought it together. And I'm just pointing out the fact that our tax levy upon what's the, upon the homes in Orinoco is 1.7 million versus 1.2 million last year. We're at $488,500 more than the previous year. You know, it's a pre it's a preliminary budget. So. The question I have is that you know, I, I, looking over this after our workshops, 
what and this is something I, I've never heard in in all of our our budget workshops is what's left over from the previous year? What didn't we spend? Where where did we spend short of budget? And what does that look like overall? You know, oh, it'd surplus? be a tax surplus mm -hmm. yeah. or budget but surplus. surplus. Well, if you look at your rec your sheets, if you go back to page eight of eight, eight you can look at sheet, yeah, this one look there. at 2023, 22, 21. So well, it all depends, you know, our revenue, the budget of like in 23 was 1.376. Those were expenditures. And we expended eight hundred nine hundred ninety one thousand. Well, one of the, one one of the things that really concerns me is we had a we wrote a check. It was in the check register for one hundred fifty thousand dollars for the uh, for the tax on the data center. We did that for how many years? But I don't recall seeing that in the budget last year. Where that would have been at in the budget. We're writing the check for it. I think we would have a budget. So the hundred fifty thousand that you're referring to comes out of our capital budget. Okay, but where's the money come from? Well, but it's not a one. But budget. it's not a one hundred. Except that we do transfer it in. That's why it's always under the expenditure column. It's the last item. In this case, it's on line four thirty-two. It's one hundred fifty thousand, and we've done some years. We've done a hundred thousand. One year we did two hundred twenty-seven thousand. 2019, 190. So those are all capital. But for budget purposes, we need to include that in our tax levy. That's just and really a financial planner. That's just the way you need to identify your. So it's in this year too as well. It just well, I felt what well, should be in there this year. Thought we made the final payment on that. We don't make final payments. It's like in the reserves. It's in the capital budget or it's capital improvement fund. So it's it's out there. We have reserves, you know. If you look at the sheet in your in your um well, look at our expenditure report. In your it's in your uh, you know, we got like six hundred and some thousand. 133. Page 133, no. Page 133 of our 136. That's in our capital expenditure account. You said. I believe that's our reserves that we talked about. Okay. Which which one is reserve about? Uh, one is under seven. Page one thirty six of our packet. Yeah, says available balance. Yeah, eight hundred sixty five thousand. So that that's our reserve is eight right. eight sixty five. Now we put it in here. We may not use it. Hopefully, we don't use it anymore. But we use it towards streets and roads. We may want to use it towards. Lines, something that's not in the 100 budget line items to operate the, to operate the city. So, but you need to, uh, you, her, Mike Bavani, as I understand, you need to, and Mike Jason can confirm this that that's our way we've always done it. And that's what's required from our auditors just to document that. So, when the audit was in here, when the auditor was in here, he told us we had 800 and some thousand dollars in our. Reserves for capital budgets. So that's a good number. That's that's you know yeah, it's a good number to be reserved. <clears throat> it's good that we have that reserve for us. That's what I'm saying too. So okay. Um so yeah, so that is that's the budget stuff. Any questions over that? So you'll see the resolution before you resolution is 24-32. It's a resolution to approve the preliminary 2025 budget and preliminary tax levy. Again, as we discussed at the workshop, the tax levy also includes the bond 306, which is the CIP GO bond from 2013 for the shop. 
of $31,500 into that total preliminary levy as well. Again, this is the preliminary. It needs to be sent into the county by September 30th, I think. Mm -hmm. So over the next several months, we can continue to have this workshop and, and uh, go through the fine yeah. phone if we want to do that. And we can do that. Any more comments? Uh, starting point. You know, we talked about the workshops and insurance has gone up. Salaries, our expenses, and overall, we're just really good. Uh, finally, heard back about the umbrella insurance. We have that in are included in our um, insurance budget that's in the already in here. So when it comes time, that's three thousand you can take off of that one because it's all included in the municipal liability insurance policy stuff that we have. So you don't need to carry an umbrella. No, I mean you can carry an umbrella if you want to. But we have umbrella insurance already in that policy. Yeah, it's already in there. Yeah. So I guess it was because it was one of those things they, the previous administration had separated everything out, which made it so difficult to figure out where everything was. Mm -hmm. That's where it's at. So, seeing no other comments, the voice vote. Mayor Arkford. Aye. Councilor Phillips. Aye. Councilor Pendergrass. Aye. Councilor Richards. Aye. Councilor Dibblemanek. Aye. Approved. Next one is a follow up to this space and big reference to. All right. So this one was on last month. And again, I wasn't here to, to discuss it. So I'm saying it was pushed back to this month. So we are looking at new software for the city. This is our. Um, software that covers our general ledger accounts payable, cash receiving accounts receivable, utility billing payroll, and time defeats is what we're looking at. Um, right now, the system we have, I compare it to operating a DOS system. It's very clunky. It takes about 10 steps to get one thing done, and it makes Renee's life extremely difficult. And just it, overall, it is not a time saver. Um, we looked at some other companies, and this has been one that's been uh, kind of all over the, the talk boards with the LMC, if you will. A lot of administrators and, and HR and utility people are looking at new softwares. Um, there's there's a handful of other companies out there, but the, the top ones that people were referencing were Banning and, and BSNA. Um, so those are the ones that myself and Renee looked at. We sat down and, and met with them online virtual, had a presentation done. The first one I'll discuss is Banyan. Um, Banyan is a, the cheaper of the two. Um, I will like them, liken them to, uh, it's like when the internet first came out in the early 2000s. Uh, it's very, very much reminds me of what we have now with Tyler Tech in the functionality and how it looks. Um, it's clunky, but it's a little bit better than what we're using now. Uh, their software services, I do have a breakdown. Shh. That was in last month. I don't know if that got included in this month's. Okay. Um, well, the breakdown sheet kind of goes into. Yep. Sure. Yes. Yep. 69 is the breakdown sheet again. Um, you can see the price differences. However, there's a lot of stuff that Banyan does not offer, such as the uh, general ledger module, the accounts payable module, receipt, cash receipt module, uh, accounts receivable module. Um, they also struggle when it comes to payroll and time card and stuff like that. You know, they have the system there in place, but they don't have it so that a staff member, say Kane, can go back and go, hmm, what's my year to date for uh, that I've got left for leave? Or, you know, what's my, you know, what's, what's this or what's that? So it's, it's one of those things. And the answer I got from them was, oh, well, we're working on it. We're looking at putting something together, but there was no time frame. There was, there was no nothing as to what they were going to have. Um, I know the council, there was there was a brochure that was included as well. The council had asked if they had a, a, a presentation like BSNA did. I went back and, and asked them. Uh, they do not have any presentation. What they have is literally this, this brochure that's in the, the system here. Um, like I said, 
they're an okay software system, but um, I've done research on this and, and talking with other city administrators in the area, there's, as well as across the state, there's a, there's a lot of concern with this company and there's a lot of people who are voicing strong opinions against them and not impressed with, with their product. Um, I'll speak real quick to what we have, Tyler Technologies. They have implemented some new um, online cloud-based stuff, which, you know, it seems nice. Um, however, the price tag on that from talking with other administrators is near $20,000. That's double of what, what BSNA was offering for their annual service. Um, again, that's $20,000 annually for them to do this stuff, and it's still not up to par. So that is Banyan. Does anybody have any questions on that? So Banyan has a $20,000 a year work? No, no, Tyler Tech. No. Tyler Tech is the one. I'm sorry. Yeah, the one we have the Tyler Tech has got the the online module. It's like twenty thousand dollars now. They're trying to implement this new system, and it doesn't work great, and it's still causing problems. But um, yeah, Banyan Data. They're the ones. Like I said, you can see the breakdown here. Um, yes, they are. They are cheaper. Their price came in at seventeen nine hundred one um, for their services, but they don't offer everything that we would need anyway. So there's still going to be some overlap with another program that we would need. What is it What is it that they don't have that we would need? So if you're looking at this, you're looking at the general ledger module, which we use, accounts payable, cash receiving module, and accounts receivable. They also, their online bill pay is not, how did they have that set up? It wasn't, uh, they have, they have it, but it's, it's, again, it's, it's very, so they have no accounts receivable in the general ledger stuff? Yeah. yeah. Banyan has none of that? Or did they just not have a price for it? It was included in... I don't think they have a price for it. They don't have a price for it. That's what it is. There's no price for it. So again, okay, sorry. So I misspoke. They do have it, but it's not the, a price breakdown for it as a module. I think it's that's where theirs is. A, it's an all lump sum. Um, for those was there any way we could get for those. Where we get the get the prices on those? It's it's part of their lump sum. And their base price is what they have off of it. Yeah. Is everything yeah. broken out? The other concern I have with Banyan is they don't offer um the the uh, ability by them to bring in previous data. So what I mean is we have data that we've been using currently that has all of our records. On, you know, on our system, they don't offer that transcribing back in. If we want to do it, we can, but it's up to us as a city to figure out and to try to do. And I like to think I'm tech savvy, but I'm not that tech savvy. And that's going to take a lot of time to try to figure out how to cross these over and, and do them. So that was another major downfall for Banyan for me. What, what would be the crossover? You're talking about like water bills, stuff like that? Yes, bringing all the information meter, all the readings we have currently and all that stuff for the, the billing, trying to bring that stuff over um, it is left up to the city to do that. They don't, they don't offer that. So BSNA, um, I equate them to the newest Android or Apple iOS system, the uh, top of the line kind of stuff here and their price does reflect it. Um, however, with the price, I will say it is broken up over multiple payments, three payments, um, with the initial payment being made uh, right away in that 40 to 60 days after the agreement. Uh, the second payment is 60 to 90 days after going live. And then that last payment is due within uh, 12 months of the program. That's, and that's, it's after all the training has been completed. So keep that in the back of your mind as we go through this. They do offer cloud modules. Um, I think that was everything. Banyan didn't offer cloud modules. Theirs was a, a service. Um, so they do offer cloud modules, so it's all out there. You can see the breakdown of what each cost would be for each of these. What's um, the cloud module? Is that for, for storage space? Yeah. Storage. So um, with that, you know, you're know, you looking at these. the functionality of each one of these is extremely easy. Um, Again, I sat down, Renee was with me on this. We sat down, looked at it and, and going through all these account receivables and general ledger stuff. And it, I think will significantly cut down the time it takes to do 
the work here, um, which I think is a benefit to the city because it allows us to get work done faster within the office uh, and provides us more time to be able to focus on other things. For the personnel management side, the payroll and timesheets, uh, it provides just way more for the staff uh, to be able to, you know, for the individual staff, they can clock in, clock out. Uh, they can check all their stuff online. They can see where they're at with leave hours. You know, it kind of holds them a little more accountable. They have that that option, which is something they've been asking for, is to be able to have that functionality. Uh, and it allows us to easily bring in the payroll. So we're not using, right now, the city still uses punch cards, like punch, stamp. Um, so this would kind of bring us into the 21st century of using online payment and, and you know, being able to do that. Um, key fob time clocks type stuff? No, no key fob time clocks. It's, it's all done on the computer and it just allows them to be able to clock in manually from that way instead of having to actually be present and type in a, a sheet or punch in on a time card. And then that makes it easier on our end because we can pull everything up on the computer instead of them having to bring stuff to us, you know, it, or, you know, say Caleb's gone into training. Well, it's payday week, he's not here, we need his time card, we need to submit stuff, well, he's out of town, he can do that from a computer and get it done. Um, so, and again, it also offers an online portal for the citizens, and I think that's also one of the most important aspects. Um, this will allow us to be able to offer online portals for the community. The citizens can check their utility bills online, they can pay their utility bills online. Um, you know, it's it's one of the most frustrating things, and I've seen it multiple times this week with utility bills going out. We send out little postcards. They get lost in the mail. And then it's, oh, I need my utility bill. Can you resend me one? No, we don't we don't have that to resend it. It's a print off and go once. So it's one of those, you know, we tell them what it is, but we've now lost that function. Whereas with this, we have that ability online. They can, I mean, they can view all of their historical data online from where was I at last April? You know, what was I, you know, how much water did I use? Um, Will and Banyan provide that? Banyan does not. So, so Jason, maybe you said this. I, I was looking up reviews. Yep. Um, do they tell you approximately how long it will take to get from yep. zero to hero? <laughs> yep, I haven't gotten there yet. Um, and with Banyan, you're looking about a year, I think it was, for their... So six months to a year, somewhere in that time frame. I think it was a year. It was. It was a year to from, and that's that's kind of customary with this software because they're they're putting in a lot of stuff on their end. Um, so it does take time before going live. And then when you say they, so they'll come here, go through all of our data sources and yep. port it in. And I'll I'll explain that as I, okay. as we continue to go through this. Absolutely. So with this, they also offer data conversions. Now they do. We can. We can do it ourselves again, but they actually offer this, this function and they will go back five years and they will input all of our journal transaction histories for general ledgers. You'll see in here, they can go in with accounts payables, put in vendor stuff, invoices, check history up to five years. There's a They will go back and do all of this up to five years for us and implement all this stuff, all this history into our system. So we have this database backup. We can reference back if there's a question. We don't have to try and hold on to a system to be able to reference it. Because mm -hmm. oftentimes when you switch software, if it's not compatible and you not, can't bring stuff over, you're holding on to that data somewhere or another for a, for a while as a city or a, an entity, just so you have a reference point if there's questions or concerns or things that come up. With this, we'd be able to bring those five years over and have all that information is, there. Is with there us. any reason we need anything further back than five years? I don't believe so, no. Most of that, like I said, with this, you're looking at invoices and all that stuff would be in there. And it's, oh, yeah, it's well, that's, you know, how you look at tax service is seven years. Well, it's kind of that five to seven years for most things. So, so well, a lot of, a lot of what we need beyond the five years would be legal, basically archive yep. stuff, yep. right? Yep. Yeah. And we legal would, notices. And we have that all electronic. So everything we're talking about, are, they're, 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 they're not going to have to go through and enter invoices and things like that. It's all electronic. Currently, that it data should be in there, yeah, I would think. Well, we, just, yeah, we, we have the numbers from the invoices put in there. This system will okay. allow us to, like, for invoices, it'll allow the fire department or public works to be able to create an invoice and send it over to us, my understanding. 
Yeah, but I, I'm just talking historic. Okay. I mean, I think we still have all of that backed up on what's going on. So is there anything in our system? Yes, that's so that what it is. No we can add the PDFs. That's the other thing. We can add the PDFs of like an invoice to this, whereas right now we can't. We got to hold on to these paper copies. With this, this gives us the option to scan, put it in as a PDF, and that paper copy can go because now we've got it stated onto the cloud. Um, so as again, you'll see the breakdown on each one of these. The integration is the other important part. They do work with our Badger meters or uh, public utilities. Um, so that was kind of one of the base things we really want to make sure is that we're not going to have to try to get only water meters across the city. So they do integrate those. Um, and then you get into project management and implementation, planning and training. This is where you kind of get into some numbers that could fluctuate, right? They put in an average based off of our city size and our, our uh, size of our staff. Um, whereas that could kind of train or could change based on how well we're picking up training and, and all that. But they come out here in person. Banyan does not come out in person. They do everything online. Um, this company comes out here in person and trains us in person and works with us in person to make sure that we understand this and get this. Um, and then it continue. I mean, the, the, the ability to, to work with them throughout continues, obviously. Uh, but they will be out here in person to help us train, implement, get going, and make sure that we fully understand so everything. So what would be the timeline of getting the, the data out yep. and then, and then the, the training in place? So if, if if you look at it, it's kind of, um, no, they got their their timeline is between a year to a year and a half to do this for all, for all of it, to get everything done from start to finish, to go live with the city and, and be out there ready to go. Everybody trained up, everything transitioned over. Um, and again, that time frame is right on par with any other software program that you're going to be implementing um, for a lot for something that's this intensive and uh, and goes into. So we're not going to know what it would take to train a new person on the, on the road until we're already in it and up and running, right? Yep. I mean, it's pretty much. Yeah, but their initial training will come out and get us trained up and get, get the current employees yep. trained. I guess I'm. Things for the future employees too, because you know we get new people coming on here and there. Yep, and they will, you know, they'll be able to offer them some training, you know, probably online. We'll have them come out, but we will be able to again. That that training still stays there when we get new employees. We can get them brought in and, and trained, and that'll be also on us as staff. We will be trained up enough to be able to train employees on how to use this program. Um, it's very user friendly from I think from a staff standpoint as well as from a community standpoint with what it offers online um, and the functionality. So again, you'll see the, the payment schedule. The 26,000 is the first payment, which is due upon the execution of the agreement. Based off of our budget for this year, we do have that money already allocated uh, for software and, and technology. So that, that is available to be used. And then in preparation for the preliminary that we just approved, that was part of the preliminary budget was, you know, my, my hope and anticipation of having BSNA so that the rest of this money is also budgeted as well to be able to uh, to have it covered next year. Um, beyond that, the annual fees, the module annual fees, like I said, is 11225 Again, that's half of what Tyler Technologies is doing with their new uh, cloud-based software program. So that's an annual fee. Yes, that's an annual fee, that $11,225. Um, and that's, that's for the storage and, and, I mean, everything training storage of all the stuff online the the help and just maintaining the the, the program Current so it's twenty thousand for the yeah update. if we were to use tyler tax it would be roughly twenty thousand dollars for an annual fee that's overall mm -hmm. no that's a system they have that's place. right now that's not that's going what we have that's what's in place now not going in the bed. right no but i'm just trying to understand so you're saying tyler tech would be more than that yeah, so but we, is that uh, is that a compo one composite charge or is with is Tyler then further breakouts as I'm seeing here with this one for you know the 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 data conversion database setup um, the integration you know the the things listed under that I guess the thing I would question there Jason and maybe they shared with you that you could help us understand so. That annual fee, mm -hmm. I get that. Most most softwares like that have an annual fee. Yep. But the conversions, 
and database set up, they're charging us 15,000 every year. No, that's a one-time fee. Yeah, that's a one-time fee to bring everything over, set it up. Okay, so these one. aren't an annual, the only no, no, no. annual expense is 11. The only annual expense is 11, correct. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. There's a big chunk because it's a, there's there's a lot of asking stuff for it too. No, I'm oh, okay. Um, so yeah, but the only annual fee is the 11,000. Okay. The rest of it is a one-time fee for data conversion database set up, the integration of the meters, project management, which is them working with us and implementing the planning and, and working through that, which we're doing with like Diligent right now. Yeah. Right. Our, yeah. our software program for the agenda stuff. That's about a six month process to get that going live. So that's part of their project management. And then that, like I said, their training they have listed on here and travel and stuff, all that's dependent. How quickly are we picking up stuff? Do we really need eight days versus six days? You know, yeah. there's, there's some Flex in that. That's why that last payment is due after the completion of everything. So when you say so, when, you, when you say working with the meters, you're talking about reading the smart meter, use it for a smart meter. Yes. Does it does it Ben you know, also pick that up right now? Yeah, they would they would pick that up. We were only looking at ones that would work with our meters because we don't want to switch meters. What's the annual payment that there is to Banyan for the annual service? Payment? That's at seventeen thousand. So that's no, sorry, no, no, that's no, total. I'm sorry. How much per year? Their annual fee is four thousand seventy dollars. So, and you look at this with the annual fee. Tyler Tech right now is at twenty five. We don't have that. Um, their 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 new cloud based stuff. That is a new program they're pushing out there. Um, so I get the feeling that our fees are going to be changing with Tyler Tech in the near future. Anyways, I don't know exactly what they would be, um, but that's the talk around the water cooler. So that is BSNA. I think BSNA is, is well worth it. Again, it is going to be able to provide transparency for the city with people being able to access their information readily um, and you know quickly online and be able to pay bills and just see where they're at, which is, uh, this is something that citizens have been asking for for us for quite a while. So I think it's important and this sets us up for the future to, you know, for future growth and to be successful and, and just to, do the best that we can for the city. So uh, my my push is for BSNA package software. So I, I'll just they both, they both offer online bill pay. Mm -hmm. Right. There's the, there's the but the what they offer in that online and because online and online bill pay, what they offer banning compared to BSNA is nothing. Banning doesn't offer the ability for people to look back at their records as to what they were previously and and view and you know so as as somebody who's used these kind of systems in my past residences and locations i've lived i go back all the time and i can pull up you know how much for you know the city i was in was electric and water i can see how much water i've used this month compared to last year this month you know i can i have that year comparison and i think that's a great thing where i go man why am i you know, why am I, I, I can kind of monitor that and go, why am I so high this month versus where I was last month or, or whatnot? So if they said we have water stop, you are stuck a couple of months ago. I, or your toilet doesn't stop running because for some reason the flush is really? broke. So, you know, it's, it's important things like that, that I think the citizens will enjoy. And then for our end as the city, it offers just a lot of added benefits to be able to, you know, in, improve our time uh, and, and just be able to help us in the office as well. Well, based on our uh, city administrator's recommendation, I would make a motion that we approve the purchase of the BSNA software. Is there a second? I'll second it. Discussion? Yeah, definitely. Um, the discussion on it is we're looking at a total of $78,575 for the, the BSNA software. Uh, the Banyan is at uh, 17901 um, Just due to the situation of what we're looking at in our budget, what we have, and, and trying to uh, keep things, and this would be a step forward for what we have. And according to the reviews, it shows that 80% of the people that are using Banyan are happy with it. Um, I'm going to go with uh, uh, the Banyan at 17901 which is even less per year, which is 4,070 per year to keep that up. 
Um, I know there's lots of good bells and whistles and all of us would like to drive Cadillacs, but I think that right now and the way the city is, I think we might be closer to, to a Chevy type situation. You know, I, I will say that in the, um, the, the, the packet here, you'll see with BSNA, it shows all the cities in Minnesota um, that have moved from to BSNA from their previous one. And there's a lot of them on here that are moving from Banyan and have moved from Banyan over the last 10 years um, to BSNA. You know, you look at, I know Byron's on here. Um, there's a couple of them in our area, but yeah, city of Byron moved from Banyan to, to them. Again, I think the, the functionality and everything of BSNA is what the citizens are asking for. And I think they would appreciate the expenditure of it. I understand we're watching the budget. I 100% agree, but I think this is an expenditure that the city can't cut corners on because you're going to be stuck with this next program for presumably at least 10 years before you'd even want to look at switching to get your, your money and your time worth out of it. Um, and by that point, who knows where Banyan is going to be versus BSNA, who's already up there and, and keeping pace with the time. So again, that's why I'm encouraging BSNA. Well, yeah, I did, some, I did some Google reviews, too. Um, on Google, I saw BSNA was 4.5, and Google or Banyan data was 4.0. So there was a difference there. In star yeah, ratings. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm looking, you know, I mean, we're not like Byron that we've got the tax base that we can play around with. And I'm looking at what our tax base is for the people right now. And this is going to be a step up to bring us, you know, uh, make things easier. But, you know, the others, I mean, it, it's nice to have the bells and whistles. There's no question about it. But I just don't see where, where we can, you know, put that money into it for the city right now. Let me ask, Jason. So would we have to sign a contract for yeah. either of these? So it's a contract either one, for yeah. X years. Oh, it's not for... For X amount of years, you're going to sign a contract for the, the stop, and then, you know, you there's there's always a clause to get out. But if you're signing a contract for these, you're not. There's there's no like, oh, we're going to try it out for you because it's going to take at least a year to implement and right. get going, and then you're really going to have to spend you know at least three to five years really feeling it out and and until everything's comfortable with it and it's working. Like there there's obviously, and you understand software. There's a long process that comes with a lot of it to make sure that it's really where it's at. So in selecting this, you're selecting something that's presumably five to 10 years, you're going to want to hold on to at least, if not longer. Um, and that's why I think it's worth the investment to do that. Um, but you, yeah, you're, you are signing the contract for it, but it's not like, a, oh, we're going to sign it for three years right. type thing. It's, it's, it's just the, the contract and then you renew it each year as you, right. it's it, not it automatically like, renews type of thing each yeah. year as you okay. continue through. And if you want to opt out, you can opt out. But I think it's a long-term decision, and I know we've had a lot of citizens asking for it. So I think it's I think it's worth it. I think there'll be support for it. Well, we're looking at the different. You know, you're saying five to ten years. You know, with Banyan uh, data for ten years, we're looking at fifty-eight thousand six hundred and ten dollars versus uh, one hundred ninety-eight thousand. Yeah, that's the cost of doing business. So I look at this as being a tool. This is a tool of all the staff needs. They've got computers and software. And that's what they do day in and day out is software. So this is a tool that they use. It's no different than public works with pickup trucks, skidster motors, mowers, hundreds of thousands of dollars. So if you look at the fire department, they've got their tools, hundreds of thousands of dollars, three quarters of a million dollars or whatever it is, that's a tool they use. And I think this is just all fits into a tool that our city staff needs that our citizens will appreciate just as much as everything that public works does and the fire department does. And I think this is a tool that they really need and, and would support and be excited to have that capability of doing that, whether it's online or the history. We just know that our staff is being more efficient they can do more things than what they're doing today. And if we look at our finance clerk, hopefully coming next year, this is a great tool for that finance clerk and makes our efficient, our department work more efficient. And, you know, 
what we got today of Tyler Tech and what potentially could be more cost anyway for an annual fee. To say struggling with the steps at Tyler Tech is an understatement. Um, it's been something we've had our staff has had to deal with for 15 plus years. Yeah, and so I don't think we're arguing. So I, I think that's really just that's some thing. Yeah. That's, that's understandable. Yeah, I don't I don't think we're we're yeah. arguing that what we're getting from Tyler Tech isn't doing it. It's um, not doing it very well. No. Well, no, no. no, we understand. We're looking at at Why? cost of of these two in front of us. Um and you know, is one a Cadillac and one a Buick, you know? And are we still going to get there? And what, what's the ride going to be like? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm struggling, honestly, you know, when you put the numbers together, I'm struggling. Do I, do I want this functionality in here? You bet. Um, yes, we see it with Banyan. I, I know that uh, Banyan doesn't offer the services based on what Jason is saying. Um, but I guess uh, what it comes down to is, are we going to get the bang for the buck? So Jason, you're saying it's going to save us a lot of time. Will it save us $150,000 of time or $100,000 of time over We're looking the long at $190,000 yes. versus $58,000. Yes, because it also will save us time when we look at doing our audit each year because they'll be able to access this information directly, or the auditors will. So we're not running back and forth trying to find files. They can pull all of these records. You know, they can't it'll, with this. No, they can't with that. They can't with what we have. You know, it it, it offers a lot more functionality to it as well. Um, you know, it there's there's a lot of a lot of stuff we can also provide access to counsel for these different ledgers. So when they're not being printed off, just like we do with iWorks, there's there's checks and balances that can go into that as well. There's there's a lot of functionality to it that's that I think is key. And to bring up the car point, great. Yeah, I look at, I would rather buy a Cadillac than a Buick. I would rather have a car that's brand new off the lot, ready to go, I know it's gonna last me, has a great warranty, and I don't have to worry about for 10 years versus a car that's used, you know, who knows how it was written, and yeah, I'm getting a great deal on it, but what problems are we gonna have two, three years down the road with it that now we're in a place of, oh crap, you know, here we are stuck with this program that we've invested money in, and now we've got to go through the process of changing again if we want to change and go through this all again. And these prices will only go up from here. You know, your initial prices are only going to go up. So that's where I, I take that and I look at that and I go, I think it's worth the investment. And over time, yeah, it's absolutely going to be worth its money um, that it's going to cost us. Well, I think right at the moment we're, you know, hey, I agree. It, it's prob probably the way to go. Right at the moment, we're looking at a four hundred and eighty-eight thousand dollar budget increase for this this year. We're just talking about spending seventy-eight grand on this. So it's kind of like, I wish this were to come up at a well, different time. It's not. It just, it's, it's not seventy-eight of next year's budget. There's twenty-six that's coming out of the budget already. It doesn't matter which budget it comes out. But the Seven, numbers, the numbers matter. Grand. That's true. But the numbers matter. If you're going to compare it to a budget, the numbers matter. Well, so it's one of those You're things. You're still looking at $62,575. Correct. Right? Absolutely. Exactly. It's an investment in the city and the community Absolutely. and the citizens. Can some of this money to finance this be taken out of some of the other categories of the preliminary? Well, we have a, or surplus, you know? Like where you want to pull that money from well, later next year? Like the that could be up to you guys, but it's, it's budgeted. Like I said, we made money. the budget money. for it for this. You know to include because it's you know it's not really meant what you would think of a capital expense which is for like your roads and, and big other expenditures like that but we're talking hundreds of thousands of dollars this is something you budget for and you do it's a it's a one-time budget of a big budget for this year that will be reduced next year because we're not having the extra cost incurred it's only eleven thousand of that if you will seventy thousand total so and remember, every single financial transaction goes through these softwares. Yeah, right. every single financial transaction goes through these softwares. Mm -hmm. I was in every single one of our software components today alone. 
And I, I mean, I, I'm not arguing the fact that there's not a lot of good in it. You know, I, I know there's a lot of good in both. I just struggle with the final cost. Um, or do we look at this and say the pencil's going to get really sharp in December, you know, to, to make up? And next year as well, because you're going to turn around and you've got um, basically $52,000 burden that there is coming up next year in the 2025. Not considering the, the 2024 this year. How can I, I ask? How is that any different than giving seventy thousand to streets and roads? Like we we need the money there to support the staff. Like it was mentioned earlier, like this is a tool for us to be able to do our job and to do it efficiently and effectively for the city. That this is something the city has been lacking for years, if not like over a decade, and has fallen behind. This is one of those areas that they've just fallen behind in. And so we need to get them brought up to speed, not halfway there. Well, we also turn around and we cut back on, on street maintenance too, if we don't have the money that's there. So we, we say, okay, we can't do that. And we wait till the next year afterwards and, and hopefully try to do it. I understand your point. That's just, um, you know, to me, and, and I know you're mentioning the other cities that there are that, that um, are moving that direction. I think there's what is it 800 cities in minnesota so i mean i know the ones that are moving isn't really necessarily the total of what you're looking at you know inside and i remember when when uh, shirley was here and a few of the other people that came in those people are pretty much familiar with how to run the banyan system and and uh, you know understood that one well too um I, again i just i'm, I'm having and, and struggling with the cost i really am like I would hope, I don't think you mean to, but I don't think you're comparing our streets to our staff. No, 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 I'm not. I'm just, he was saying that, that that that's it. I'm just I'm just saying, you know, when it comes to streets, we do cut back on what there is. So I, again, I'm I know that we don't want to stay at Tyler Tech, but um, I just I have a hard time making that difference, especially on the yearly increase of, of another eleven thousand dollars per year just to maintain it. You know, with the other one being. Being four thousand, I just think we're going to get a bigger bang for a buck going with Banyan. Even it might not have all the stuff. Banyan's still always trying to grow too with what they're saying. If you read some of the stuff that's in their literature, I just I just feel like it's extremely important to give the tool for our office staff, our auditors, and everybody else that just touches the finance. Is that it's it's critical to be efficient. And right now we're not efficient, and we've heard the story already. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I, you know, and everything you're saying, Ryland, is is a hundred percent spot on. It's, it's just the cost, you know. <laughs> let's go, say, let's go sell a fire truck then. Yeah. Well, they got one. Let's go sell one. a pickup. I don't know. <laughs> well, it's or a tool, you know. You know. Maybe we look at taking because it is such a big bite, we take part of it out of the, out of the, the surplus fund or the general fund or, you know, on the, lat, on the, what do we call it? The technical term yeah, on that back page and fund it Capital partially fund. with that and take, put the other part on the, on the budget. I find that ever you want to do it. Just because that I, I, I think, done that on other projects. Yeah, I mean, I think we we need something like this, whether it's Banyan or uh, BSNA. I think I think we need it. Oh yeah, I'm not. I'm not. Yeah, it's going to buy us time. It. It's going to help with budget. I, it's and and it you know the governing body of the city could have access to some of that stuff and and. Keep a finger on the pole. Well, BSNA is going to come and install. Uh, they're right. Gonna, they're going to do the upload of all the numbers. Right. And yeah. because to me, this is where I'm coming from. And yes, I struggle with the price, but that's why I'm, I'm trying to see how, how can we chisel this down a little bit? Because I know from what I do, the effort it's going to take to come in for the staff to come in here and do this and load this, front load this. 
you're two years out. Absolutely. At least. At least. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yep. And, and then the That's question it. is, it what are right. the updates? And is, is it going to be right where you load it? Um, and, the, and the other piece of that that I see, and I, I see this with my job through the years, is you're, you're going through this effort, and then people have to get trained, too. You know, so you have to move fast with both so you can get this thing stood up. So, well, here, here's one, one of the things that we've sat and talked about the budget. We had five budget meetings the last couple of weeks, and everything on the budget was uh, that we got to have the best of everything. We got we to have everything. You know, we got to have it. it was, this was a do or everything was a do or die situation. So it's kind of like, where do we cut the corners to make this room for this? Well, that's like, that's what I said, you know. Something, you know. something has to give to, yeah. do that, to do that big number. Yep, so take take some of the money out of the CIP and then make sure our pencils are sharpened and we're, and, and I know we wrote things down for December that we can, that we can cut. Um, we, we need to do something. So how much would you recommend cut, taking out of the, the CIP then? And well, we're looking at trying to cut the budget too, okay? Because it's just oh, preliminary right, right now. And we're going to go down. Yes. So you're saying, okay, I'm playing around back and forth. You know, if we cut with the rest, we're still at that same number. If we're turning around and financing this, at the it's a cost, okay? So it's, it it is software. It's a capital improvement for what it is. It is. So no, but if, you, if you're going to say take 20, 20 grand out of the CIP to help cover the cost, that's twenty grand off of the budget because the preliminary budget includes the financing for this already. Well, it, it does, so, but that's going in too. It can, that's just part of it. So we've got the, the cost this year and also the cost next year. with it. And then every year there, this but year's the cost, it, this year's already wrong, the cost, the cost that, I, that I heard, the annual cost is cheaper than the cost we're paying now. Well, yeah, but I mean, if you look at Banyan, it's only $4,070 versus $11,000. You're also getting half of what you would give with BSNA. No, I, I, again, that's it. and I know Banyan's growing too with what they're trying to do to stay competitive with what's ha what's happening. I think that we definitely have to get rid of Tyler. So I'm I understand that. Um, I'm just struggling again. You know, if we're looking at some CIP, if you're going to do it that way, then it would take the full cost off of it and then be able to reduce the budget for next year. So if we look at, and I, I like the idea of the capital budget because we've done that on other projects, mm -hmm. right? We did that with the well that we bought back in 2016. Mm -hmm. We took some out of that, some out of the water and sewer. I would suggest we do that here, but the point is I would, you know, I, I think it's a great discussion. I think that if we looked at as a suggestion uh, of taking um, the goal, I guess, let me put it that way, if we could take 20,000 out of the budget and 30,000 out of the uh, CIP fund. Um, that should be a goal that we should strive to meet our obligation of the 52,000 uh, by August of. Well, see, we've already, we've already approved the first 26. Can I recommend something? Sorry, I don't mean to interrupt, but just to try to speed this along. Can I recommend that we make the third payment with CIP funds? The first one is already accounted for this year. So the second payment, which is at the end of the activation, which is the annual fee of 11,000 would still be covered under next year's budget. And then the remainder fee of the 4135 or presumably a little bit less, depending on how their long their training takes, um, would just come out of the CIP, the third payment to come out of CIP. That way we know right where the money's coming from. First payments this year, the second payment is budgeted for in the, in the preliminary and the third payment is coming out of CIP. So when we go back to do the review of the budget in December, we know how much that we need to cover for the cost of the second payment. Just so we don't add in the CIP fund, we take it right out of what, what we've already budgeted. For. It's an in-out transfer. So you're still going to take the 150 transferred in, but then we'll right, take out of it. We don't, but we don't bill transpayers, taxpayers for an additional 41,000. You take it, you take it out. No, you, 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 you take it out of what you've already that's, agreed. That's, yeah, but that's still... Out. It's still the taxpayers' money, however you look at it. So, I mean, but now they're coming I free. That. You know, just, so. I understand that. I'm just saying you don't put an additional forty-one thousand onto what we no, need no. to take out of the CIP budget. That's where I'm at. Yeah. Yeah. So can I? 
second the amendment to that. So I okay. I'll go ahead. I will make amend the motion to say that we would pay just to clarify those three payments in the motion. We would say that we the twenty six thousand dollars of the first payment would come out of the twenty twenty four budget. Eleven thousand two hundred twenty five. Or the second payment would come out of the 2025 budget and the balance of 41350 would come out of the CIP in 2025. That's a very good approach for a capital expenditure like you talked about. Mm -hmm. That's just all part of equipment for public works is a tool. So we need to accept the amendment. I'll, I'll, I'll second it. Okay. Any other comments? It's a good I think it's a good, good compromise for a great tool that we're going to have going forward for our staff. Yeah. And and one thing I I just like to add if if we could as I know, this is this is a scary price right now, especially in the times that we're in. Can we somehow, once we get up and running, show a realization of what it's saving us? I know it's going to save us in budget. You know, well, it, really do some realization that hey, it's it's saving. Well, 10 hours a week yep, here. Nope, we can do that. Know? Well, what, one thing you, one thing is what I understand you're going to see is the uh, auditor can tap into this and, and our staff right. should, and our staff shouldn't have to do any more than give right. him access. Not their time. Exactly. Nothing more than give him, allow access. Okay. So it's no, no time off. Somebody, you know, it's weeks of time. If we could reduce well, time. We're still going to have to do some because I want us to pull some. But like the other yeah. one, I don't want to see us spend the, spend the time of of uh, everybody training on one, and it's kind of half yeah. of what we really need when we spend the time of training on. Yeah. I think it's, once. it's a good idea to lower. I mean, it's gonna, it's it'll won't be such a slam on the budget. Well, you're getting some, you're getting a lot of hands on with them coming and helping install all that. There's a lot of information. That's like a, a, having uh, another employee. I mean, yeah, I was, exactly. It's like another employee for a few months. But the travel okay. expense yeah. alone is seventeen thousand dollars for them to come out. So they're they're yeah. probably paying the guy to come here quite a bit of money. Seventeen thousand to, to train Yale, right. where we didn't have person apparently, training. Apparently, they're going to pay him twenty two thousand. That's a good bill. Yeah. yeah, it's basically a consultant. Yeah. yeah. And we know what they they charge based on our yeah. budget workshop. We're just whittle other ways in the budget. Right. Okay. okay, let's uh, two other comments. All in favor of the uh, motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Approved? Great. So we'll uh, find out when it starts. We'll get going on it tomorrow and get everything moving forward. So, okay, uh, moving on streets and roads, new business. Packet uh, there's a motion to approve the public hearing November the 19th to have our staff put together a resolution or just a so this is this is from Renee to confirm a, a, a motion to approve to start the process earlier. Yeah. yeah. Give the people opportunity to that look before the end of time. So I make a motion we approve of the period on November 19th to access assess delinquent utility accounts. I second that. Okay. Any comments? Say none. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Consent agenda. Make a motion. We approve the consent agenda. And there's a lot of stuff in the consent agenda, so I'm not going to go quite that quick. Uh, what's going on? So um, I like to go. If we're going to pull anything out, we should have done that when we set the agenda. 
Well, I think we're on the consent agenda now, aren't we? What's that? We're on the consent agenda now, aren't we? Right. And I'm just so saying, I'm it's not... too late to pull anything out. No, I didn't say Paul. I want to discuss some of the stuff on the consent agenda. Right, yes, we got to get a second for discussion. Mm -hmm. I'll second it. He made a motion to do it. I'll second. Now looking at uh, page 137 uh, <clears throat> on uh, financial administration, uh, where where again we're not that's not much of a of a dollar amount, but it's still we're over by 174 percent at 2,277 dollars. That's one that that I, I catch, uh, Deputy Clerk, where. We're over budget on that one by $12,400. Legal services were over by $4,120. Um, we should have some extra money that, that should be sitting around with the ice and snow removal because we've got $54,000 that we didn't spend for that. So this is kind of goes along with what do we have at the end of the year and where does that, that money go? Um, and the shop too, we were we're over by four thousand six hundred nineteen dollars for the shop. And uh, general maintenance for groundskeeping, we're over by twenty three thousand two hundred Check register page one thirty nine. Um, I was just looking at what we have for legal expenses out of that stuff with um, our lawyer. Um, got a few of those. One of them was for five thousand seven hundred and twenty eight, and the other one was for five thousand seven hundred and thirty seven. What line? What check number do you have? Uh, I'm looking at check number eighty thirty four. And also seventy nine eighty eight. Uh, for those, um, and fire, uh, just had a fire safety off of that. We had a, a big expenditure off of that for fifteen thousand. I don't know if we those are on order for. Uh, our gear, that's what that was, but uh, it's still pretty expensive off of it. What line is that on? That's line number 88065. Eight. No, that's 140 out of 140. And I didn't go through the other stuff that we just got tonight, so I didn't get a chance to go through that. I noticed too, with um, just looking at the last bill that there was for Mike coming in, and I'm, in a way, I'm glad he's not here. But just for him to attend our last meeting was seven hundred and eighty dollars for Mike to be here. I mean that's pretty costly. Yep, this is where I'm starting to cut so, it back more. Yeah, so those are just things that I want to make people aware of. So. Any other discussion? I see we got our we got our tree puller for twenty four twenty. If I recall, we we uh, did we uh, approve that for up to four thousand dollars. Oh, well, I don't know what the amount was. If that was yeah, is that right, it was, it was two to you know, but I just see it come in yeah. two to four, whatever come in and. We're paying people's services eighteen thousand a month. Is that everything? Mm -hmm. Contract, right? The uh, the playground safety surfacing is that that uh, River Park or is that all? Would we, are we going to get reimbursed? That's all part of we get yeah. yeah, we get that. That yeah, that'll be that's 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 that all. Yeah. Okay. What percent? What percent? Right? Seventy five. Okay.
any other comments? Seeing none, all those in favor of the consent agenda, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Approved? Make a motion meeting adjourned at 9 05. Second. Favor, signify saying aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you very much. Anybody ever say no? Jim, I just want to 